I mean, he's clearly drunk, but he's also angry. Away, the Star Wars saga began, and Kenner continues the excitement. Star Wars figure. The Empire Strikes Back turn of the Jedi. Welcome to the Star Wars Collector's Archive podcast. It's the Cardcast. Newest news on the oldest toys, from bubble bath to belt buckles. 12 packs to 2 packs. New boss, Alien Bounty Hunter. Brothers, 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 Star Wars collection. Watch out, watch out! We bring the world of vintage Star Wars memorabilia alive with your hosts, Sky Payne, Steven Chewbacca, 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 and Steven B. Deadly. I've got you now, Ben Kenobi. Creeps All Three Eyes is back as Sky and Steve discuss Reese, his deleted scene, his original design, his cigar habit, his video game skills, his photo art, sculpt, trinoculars, and even his Dixie cups. Gus Lopez joins the crew to talk about the John Mallow sketchbook, the unproduced White Witch, and the upcoming 25th anniversary of the Archive panel at Celebration. Finally, Chris Jorgulius and Fantastic Pete Fitzke hop on to discuss the recent Prop Store auction. All this in a discussion of the most recent scandals from Hasbro and Red Letter Media on the 96th Kivecast. Wampa Wampa. Welcome to Kivecast 96. 96, Oof. Steve. And after 96 episodes, I finally have a good microphone. <laughs> yeah, his voice sounds golden right now. This is great. Yeah, for the last couple episodes, uh, I've just been using the microphone on my Mac. Uh, we, we we usually use this blue snowball, which is this cheap mic. And it turns out, Steve, if you spend 100 bucks, you get a pretty good mic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what, though? Hey, you may, we started this. This is our 10th year now, and you made that thing last almost that long. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. A little bit weirded out, though. I mean, I got one of those windscreens. So like, <laughs> I feel like I should just like start saying things that start with P. Um, but we, we will not be talking about all the Star Wars characters that start with P, Steve, like Princess Leia or um, Pop Lou Prune or Prune Face. Uh, we're going to be talking about re Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, and, yes. And do you know what I have, Steve? I have a, a windscreen and I've actually put my childhood re on top of that windscreen. Ah, uh, that's uh, that is awesome. <laughs> yes, I, I'm gonna take them down now. I'm gonna look at them. I definitely remember playing with old Vienna sausage fingers. Um, <laughs> I don't have either hate or love. Hey, do you know who I love okay. that we hate, Steve? <laughs> oh, who's that? Did you know we skipped a character? Well, we might have skipped two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, which, well which... let's let's see what your logic is, though. I'm curious. We skipped low gray. Yes, yeah, he was he was my we we I remember way back when the the Chirpa episode went into the ether, we were maybe talking about trying to do a mystery mystery Ewok episode with him and Logray. <laughs> but yeah, we totally skipped Logray. I think we were just you were so upset about Ewoks that I decided to just ease off. <laughs> yeah, I, just I, just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no, I figured we'll we'll definitely get to 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 Logray soon. But yeah. um <laughs> and, and this is our our last episode until uh, Celebration Chicago. Yeah. Man, there's a lot going on. Yes. Whoa. Last episode until the archive party, which uh, Steve and I call each other basically every day and talk about stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's awesome though. I mean, it, it is uh, it's always down to the wire, but it's coming together. Uh, it'll happen. It's gonna happen one way or another. <laughs> it doesn't have to be down to the wire, Steve. Yeah, um, I, I know. Trust me, I know. <laughs> we we have all these great collaborators. But they're not great at allowing us to like be at peace. It's like, yeah, sure, I'll do this thing for you. One second, just send me the email. I sent you the email last week. All right, that's cool. I'll do it next week. It's in a week and a half. That's cool. I'll do it in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that that is the archive party way. Like as, you know, we just gotta we gotta embrace embrace it, yes. and uh, we'll, we'll we'll be fine. But st stay tuned to the end uh, of the show. Um, Steve and I will talk about fantasy baseball. But Steve, I, I want to talk about Reese. Let's jump right into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I I'm just gonna say I love Reese. I, I know you're kind of neutral, but he is. He's definitely one of my absolute favorite figures. I think. Um, well, do you know what makes me like him? Hmm. Um, actually, holding my childhood Reese while while talking about him. <laughs> hey, see that that does help. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to be one of those guys, one of those nostalgia guys. Hey, you know what though? It's okay every now and then, even for you. It's, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> Just holding the figure, I have a couple thoughts. One, um, I never noticed that he had knee pads. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're totally like skater knee pads, right? Yeah. <laughs> he uses those for skateboarding. Sure. Um, <laughs> and uh, I bet his neck hurts a lot because his head is just way, way too heavy. Um, yeah, he doesn't even have much of a neck to, to begin with. So whatever whatever's there must be sore. <laughs> yeah. So big head, chunky knee pads. Uh, yeah. Vienna sausage fingers. Actually, kind of a lobster claw hand. I hadn't really noticed that before. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like it's... a carapace, you know. His his the outside of his hand looks like a lobster's back. Yeah, that's a good that's a good way to describe it. That's that's right. What well, what is it that you love about Ryu, Steve? These. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know. I just think that in terms of the, the sculpt, which I will talk about, I think it's one of the best designed of the vintage line. There's just so much detail in him, and he's just such a weirdo. I mean, th there's some that are the Java guys. They're they're interesting, but they're not quite as out there as Reese. I feel like he's one of the weirdest Star Wars aliens of the of the old days. Um, he's very unique. Wait but, a minute, uh, Steve. First of all. There's no yeah. such thing as very unique. Unique means one well, of a kind. Okay. Yes, I, I know. I know. Second of all, I just noticed something, Steve. He <laughs> has four ears. Four ears? Yeah. <laughs> you ever I guess that? You, can, you can count those as ears. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he's not just <laughs> re he's or ears. Like, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I've never, I mean, what did you think those were? Like horns? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I think, I, yeah, they could, they could be used for hearing, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this guy just has, has way too much going on. He does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'd go as far as to say it's one of the best sculpts. I do like that sort of what you see is what you get. If you look at a lot of the, the vintage Kenner stuff, you know, the Ewoks have all their accessories, and the right. Klaatu has their skirts, and the Big right. Fortuna has his cape. Um, as somebody who lo loses all accessories and only has naked Ewoks, um, I like that Reese. All of his gear is right there. You know, his nice little pleated <laughs> shirt. Um, it's kind of cool how you can sort of tell even on the front. It looks sort of like when you're wearing a mask and it has too much neck and you have to tuck it into the front of your shirt. Yeah, that, um, that's right. Yeah. It it doesn't just look like an alien. It looks like a guy in an alien costume. <laughs> right. In action figure form. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. When he's got his weird, like, brass... Uh, his weapon always reminded me of just some weird brass instrument. It's not a weapon. It's some kind of musical instrument. Yeah, I don't even know what it looks like. <laughs> I'm, I got Kellerman open in front of me. I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to go back a few pages to, to, see, uh, to see the loose yeah. figure. Let yeah. Me, let me see what, what the... Oh, yeah. It's a funny thing. <laughs> Who cares? Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, I, I did... You know, I, I've also been thinking, what is it... When who was it that made the decision about who got a cool name and who didn't? Mm. Do we know? Yeah. That? Well, I feel like we've we've kind of touched on little anecdotes here and there, but I don't know if there was any one streamlined process streamlined process for that. But um, it seems pretty simple with him. I think they just were playing with with three eyes. But I don't know. Um, yeah, well, some are very. He, he's a hybrid, right? Because if you take uh, Klaatu, right? Then that's mm -hmm. very much like this is a character's name. This is not just the first thing you think of. Um, right. And then you see Squidhead, and you just see, hey, what do we call the Squidhead guy? Squidhead good? <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Whereas this is like a hybrid between those, where it's like, no, no, don't call him Three Eyes. Right. Uh, re, re Eyes? <laughs> re Eyes? Re Eyes. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. kind of like a, a nice hybrid. What do you prefer, Steve? Do you prefer Yak Face? Or Barada as a as a naming oh. style. Ah, man, I I don't know. I it seems like well with Barada that's that you know the it's referencing something else. But I I kind of like the <laughs> the uh, the simpler things for most because unless it's like a a specific kind of fun reference, I don't really like the bizarre kind of modern name. I love these characters i like that Rees. he'll always be Rees, and it was stuck it was just weird enough so that they never had to give him some weird lame new name <laughs> right and he doesn't have a weird name does he like in the, ex no, in I, the expanded I, universe as far as i know i don't i don't think so yeah well steve it's not even 10 minutes in and we've actually talked more about our figure of the month than we usually talk in a whole two hey episode. you know it's a good it's a good sign it, it's uh we're on say, the right I'm, track I'm pretty psyched because we've we've had a couple episodes that have been like you know they've been good but we've done blog logs and the Canadian thing wasn't a standard standard uh you know episode 
we've definitely not had a lot of straightforward characters of the month. Uh, we are going to be talking to uh, Gus Lopez about some fun things that he's recently, recently purchased and about the archive party and about the archive. And we're talking to Chris Rogulius and talking about Fantastic Pete. But like, I just like this. And uh, yeah, yeah, is that, yeah. Is that Digby? That is Digby. Um. <laughs> it's a, there's nothing we can do. So no, no, no. He yeah, he yeah. will he will dig his way through here if he if he needs to. But <laughs> yeah, my, my my dog is uh, at my girlfriend's house, so we won't, uh... we won't be hearing his little click clack. But she treats him better than I do. So <laughs> you could say she treats oh, him better than she treats me. That's actually not, that's not true. But uh, yeah, she like, cuts his nails and expresses oh. his anal glands. It's it's oh, he's, he's in good shape then. That's great. He is, yeah. <laughs> he's got a best friend now. He's got Toby. It's his best friend. And he like hangs out and he like cuddles and yeah, like he's now allowed on the couches. He now sleeps in beds. Like his whole oh, life, uh, his life has changed. Yeah. Oh man, he basically <laughs> went from just like sitting in his crate all day by himself to always being around people. So, hey, which goes good. well to the archive party because we're going to be saving more dogs like him. Uh, but I'm I'm yeah. excited enough about reuse, Steve, that I was thinking before we even get to anything else, I want to do my sky coups. It's just bursting at the at, you're bursting at the seams here with with your poetry. We gotta we gotta get get through it. But it's a first ever, Steve. Uh oh. Double haiku, double sky haiku. <laughs> the first one leads into the second one. Oh, all okay. right, all right, all right. So, now I'm i I'm, I'm really I'm I've stepped back a little bit from the microphone just in yes. case I have some kind of reaction. Yes. <laughs> it's not particularly funny, but it's it's one of my deeper ones where I try to Profound. think profound yeah because when you think about life so much of life is broken into binaries you know good and bad and dark and light and all that and like one and twos even the digital world everything is one and two what does it mean to have something with three eyes nothing in nature has three <laughs> eyes what can you see if you have three eyes i mean even the dearly departed prince his last album cover was him with three eyes that third eye seeing the special sight so i'm starting to think like what if we think about Riyi's has like a mystic who's capable of seeing things that other people are not. Okay. Oh boy, that that is quite a preamble. <laughs> yes, and also someone needs to do a custom of Riyi's on the Prince album. Okay. All right, is everyone ready? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hot summer shadows. Lobster claws grip a white cup. Riyi's season threes. Dark light in between. Jabba, Leia, Sarlacc pit. Birth, life, coming death. Wow. Wow. So, wow, wow, wow. That's, that's something. <laughs> Man, you, you have to use two card backs to... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know about... I'm running low on card backs. I, I want to do I want to do the reuse ones. Um, yeah. But I don't yeah. really have any reuse card backs. Maybe I can get someone to send them to me quickly. Yeah, yeah, that'd but be good. I, I was really happy with the Lobster Claws grip a white cup. Because the white yes. cup on... I mean, if you just look at the card back for reuse, it's super atmospheric. And it we'll, is. We'll talk very... about that soon with the photo art. Yeah. But this white cup, like there's something about him and his white cup. It's he's often pictured with it. And then just re ye season threes. And that just got <laughs> me thinking about that he's my my idea is that his three eyes see the past, the present, and the future and good, bad, and in between. That that's all that he sees at all times. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That is uh that is deep. Plus he's got knee pads, so you, you draw your own conclusions. Um, did I ever tell you, Steve? I did. I had no luck at all with girls, and uh, in high school, and uh, someone told me this joke that I didn't understand at all. I didn't know like what it meant. I still don't actually know what it means. But for some reason, I was walking with these two girls, and I decided to tell them this joke. I was uh -oh. like, "Yeah, do you know what he got her for for her birthday? Knee pads and a jar of mayonnaise." <laughs> <laughs> I still don't get the joke, but the girls just looked at me like, like I hoped like anyone would look at me. If anyone knows what that means, please uh, uh, com comment on the Facebook. What is the meaning of that joke? Oh God! 
I apologize, yeah. Jill and Christy. You were walking with me, and that's your fault because, uh, yeah, no, it's my fault. Yeah, I got a few more Rees things. Uh, we could do a, a script flip. All right, Steve. How about you? Um, wait, wait, you ready for that? Thing? Is it also going to be a behind the Steve? Let's go behind the scenes. Let's go with Dan and Steve. Let's go behind the Steve. Yeah, sure. All right, we're, we're back with behind the Steve. I think I lost the original uh, flip the script uh, soundbite, so I think we might just stick with behind the Steve. Yeah, that that that's. That sounds good. Um, All right, so so tell us about about Reese and his origin, right. Steve. These. <laughs> um, all right. Well, so I thought we'd start first with uh, a script nugget, um, and we've I think we might have mentioned this in a previous episode, alluding to it. But uh, there was this scene that was originally written in the second draft uh, of the script where they're on the sail barge, and and three PO is actually translating for two drunken aliens. And one of them is uh, that huge uh, effing mon guy, you know, the guy with the huge mouth. See, that's a dumb right. name. I, I don't like that. No, that's but... just like Riggies. It's like Elephant Man, Ephant yeah. Mon. Yeah, I it's get it. Yeah, it's... Okay, so yeah, you got him on one end, and then you have Riggies uh, on the other, and c 3 pos translating some conversation between them. Uh, and Effant Man, he's got actually, he's actually got Salacious Crumb on his shoulder, so he's kind of like his little parrot in, in this okay. version. Uh, so imagine that you have Effant Man and Salacious Crumb on his shoulder on one side. You have Reese on the other, and you have three PO in between them. Uh, <laughs> and he's described as just a, a three-eyed creature. So Effant Man insults him in some way, uh, and this is how it's described: his three eyes narrow angrily. <laughs> he then <laughs> he then slugs Effant Man in the snout, knocking him over and sending Salacious Crumb flying. <laughs> Three PO takes this as a sign to leave, and and then that's when he bumps into R two, who's then serving drinks. So, and there's even a storyboard sequence of this whole thing in the uh, the Rinsler storyboard book, and we'll post that in the show notes. So I just thought that it it seems like something that they totally could have put in the movie, or maybe even shot. Who knows? But I just love that, uh, and this will be a theme I think with Reeves. He's he's a bit of a, a drinker. That, that's yes. something that seems to, to follow throughout all of his lore. Uh, but this fact that he he socks this other big alien and, and they start a brawl on the barge right before the big battle sequence was kind of kind of funny to me. I, I'd like um, to see that. You know, why, why not? You know, I mean, yeah, of all but... <laughs> the things to kind of add, we could just sort of cut out the ja, yowza, whatever, all the, the Jedi rocks <laughs> and just have oh, like God. A, a good brawl. I, I, I would I, love to see. There was no. There hasn't really been a, a brawl, like a bar room, not full on bar room brawl before. There's been a, the thing with Walrus Man, but this is right. a little bit different. Yeah. It's hard um, to and this, one person has a has a lightsaber. <laughs> right. Exactly. And this uh, it, it kind of connects to an, another random thought I had, which I, I know you're a, a big fan of the Super Nintendo uh, Star, Super Star Wars trilogy, right? Yes. Now, do you remember Reyes in Super Return of the Jedi? His character. I do not, but okay. you know, the other day, uh, Eric Bond, who we'll be actually interviewing at some point, uh, like last year, he like he had a copy of Super Empire Strikes Back, and I was like, oh yeah, that'll be fun. I remember playing it and beating it. So you can't get past like three seconds of that game. <laughs> that that game is impossible. Yeah, <laughs> those games got really hard. Really, maybe they were always really hard. I was just more patient. For, for the, I okay. think, I think that's that's definitely part of it. Yeah, we we had played them at uh, the recent. Um, California vintage get together at our place. I I brought them out and Mark Huber and and I were playing them for a while. I'm like, good God, these are impossible. So we yeah. just stop. We just stop. But anyway, uh, in in Jedi, in one of the first levels, you you're going through Jabba's palace, and one of the like myriad of just cronies that comes in you and waves is a bunch of Reeses. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and uh, and they all they their like thing is to do like a super punch. So he's got his you know giant hands. And they're glowing green. He just socks you. <laughs> That's wow. his like move. And I, I think I sent you a video of it. I had to like capture this because it's just, it just reminded me of this weird cut scene where he's socking this other alien in the face. Uh, so, so just a, a random thing. But what we're really doing is showing different sides of this character. You know, I, I'm yeah. treating him as some kind of person <laughs> with the second sight or the third sight. And, yeah, he may, he very well may have 
both of these both of these things going on for him. You know, he, he contains he, multitudes, Steve. He's he's a complex <laughs> individual. <laughs> I, I I do think like the part of Reese that remains in the movie is he's kind of like an old school guy, like you know, like you see movies of people watching boxing. I, I yeah, think about that in, yeah. in the Rancor Pit. Speaking of boxing, like. Like the way that when they're looking down the the Gamorrean right. guards and Ryu's yeah, yeah. and they're sort of like like shadow boxing, like, mm, mm, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can't Definitely. see me I'm doing a podcast. Hey, but you yeah, know, there's, you kind of get the sense they could be chewing on a stogie, being like, "Dad, who you got in the third? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, speaking of stogies, did you did you watch the uh, the Star Tours safety video I sent you? <laughs> I did, Steve. I actually prepared a fair amount for today's okay. episode. Hey, this That's is how good. I am. <laughs> Uh, well, that's I should have, you know, when you asked me why I love Reese, I think it's because he's just implanted in all these different parts of my youth. You know, Super Nintendo's one, the figures obviously another, but this is probably I don't know, it might be my favorite thing about him is that in the original Star Tours safety training video, they're doing usual. It's like an airline, so you get the the no no photography and no smoking and and when 3PO says this it just cuts to Reese with this gigantic like tourist camera and a stogie <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that image always stuck with me and huh. it's you know I'm sad that obviously it's long gone now but uh it just it that's one of those things that was forever tied to that that character for me and it just it just goes on with his kind of I don't know strange personality it seems like he would be the guy that's smoking a cigar with a giant camera in a uh you know interstellar airline <laughs> yeah it, there's something too about sort of like the the jedi aliens where they preserve the costumes and use them after the they movie. were definitely but yeah yeah more than any other because you know with empire there weren't really that many aliens you could do that right. with and yeah. they didn't think that far ahead with the first movie so yeah no. i do feel like i've seen reyes in a lot of different places and, and behind the scenes and all that yeah um, that makes yeah. me think steve we've never given our official star wars collectors archive decision star tours vintage or not oh i guess we haven't huh is it is it vintage or is it dark times which is it steve i i think it's it's on the cusp of vintage but it's truly dark times right because I, I think we define dark times as what 86 and beyond i suppose but then that would put the glass leap figure that's in true dark I, it, it's in a very very muddy period i i i don't know maybe hey maybe let's I'm do gonna... a poll yeah let's, let's do a poll but not a poll where people can add their own opinions because i do a lot of those <laughs> on, on the mock page and that's right, becoming right. a mess well, i hey. might as well do that now steve if you're not a member of the mock page you are missing the most interesting page on all facebook steve oh i have uh, i've definitely um <laughs> missed out on, on getting some work done <laughs> It, okay, so, the, the so this is, is the whole page. thing. Okay, like, it, okay, if you're not on the mock page and you like me, you should definitely go on it because I don't know what's happened, Steve. You know, like, uh, my personality has always been kind of abrasive, and I know that I'm appreciated in the hobby and everything, but like, <laughs> for some reason, like the mock page now all of a sudden, like, I'm becoming like one of these like personality people. Like, they make memes of me and stuff, and uh, it's. <laughs> It's exciting. It's it's funny. Like <laughs> I, the, I I have to say, uh, you know the the uh, that great coin artwork of you. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> so that, did did coin you know, artwork. Yeah. Of me. So that's uh, Tom Corrigan. He's he's one of the you know he's one of the California vintage guys, and he <laughs> he had sent that to me just before he posted. It. He's like, hey, like, what do you think of this? And I just said, you need to post that right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is just oh man, it's perfect. Yeah, so someone made photo art of me, and uh, I mean uh, a coin art, and but I mean the reason to go there isn't necessarily me, but like it's just getting really weird over there because the whole idea is, was to have a place where people could just sort of not take themselves seriously. Yeah, and so that's what's nice, you know, like like Ross Barr will go on there and make fun of himself for promoting CAS too much, or I'll go on there and make fun of myself for being you know a blowhard or whatever. Um, but then like sometimes people don't quite get the joke and then like there's been all these like battles and wars and people just get out with personal things, attacks. Uh, things spiral <laughs> They do. pretty, pretty and, uh, crazily. And, uh, our moderator policy is to basically not moderate but act like we're moderating, which makes things really that's, funny. That's a, 
that's gotta be um yeah i don't even know how i would how i'd approach that uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> good so, on you though yeah sure. because i mean by all rights i mean we should have kicked out joe iglesias like 15 times because the whole thing is like no personal attacks and that dude goes on and makes personal attacks like every single day but like i like joe so and it's, it's kind of funny anyways uh that, that's my little pitch for that that was going to go in the news section steve but well uh, hey you know what we're, we're pretty much there right we gotta we gotta get some of this this crazy stuff going on um i right, feel well, like yeah what do you so, think all right yeah let's let's hit the news then steve okay watch out it's kenner's news it's kenner's news <laughs> Yeah, Steve, there's a lot of contentiousness out there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like we haven't had this much uh, controversial activity in quite a while. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been talking a lot more about my podcast lately, um, uh, just the, like people who don't know about it. And the thing they always ask is like, <laughs> what are you going to be talking about? I'm like, you actually wouldn't believe it, but there's like at least three podcasts covering this stuff, and we're not even really able to do it. And one of them is seven hours long. Um, it's, it's really funny. So I yeah. think the best place to start is the vintage exploitation unveiled at the New York comic con, New York toy con, the toy fair. E- right. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you describe what this is, Steve? So they, they call it the retro collection, right? So it's, it's what six figures. It's the, it's basically re produced versions of six of the original first 12 action figures on you know basically vintage cards with some some strange details added uh that's that's basically it right i mean it's yes. it's not something we haven't really seen before it's just been what 20 25 years 24 years since it happened right so they they re-released they did the classic edition four pack and right and that was reissuing of a of Chewbacca, Luke, Vader. It doesn't matter. Chewbacca and three other figures, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, and and they're basically doing that. So they're just remaking vintage figures, and I don't know what the hell happened to everybody, Steve. I, <sighs> I like I felt like I missed something because people were so upset. I mean, yeah, like, I, I people were like talking about like boycotting Hasbro and saying that this is the end of the hobby and this is why they can't collect. And the thing is, is I know there's absolutely no way people are going to confuse these new figures and the old figures. It's just not going to happen. It didn't happen with the classic edition. It won't happen with this. There'll be some very clear difference, whether it's a a country of origin marking or size difference or a paint application they're going to look similar, but right. they're not going to be the same for people who are looking. And, and I, I think of it more, it's probably going to be an, an annoyance for, for some collectors just because, you know, I, I, it seems like back back in 95, I don't, it just didn't seem like these were that big of a deal then. And I feel like everything is heightened now. I, I don't know. I, it just, I just didn't really have a strong feeling about them either way other than it just seems like it was kind of building to this for a long time now so it wasn't too much of a surprise to me and i think it's i think it's good steve i think vintage exploitation is always good for our hobby it's annoying i don't like it personally but as far as the health of our hobby you know i mean yeah they're, they're recreating the toys that we collect and that doesn't mean that people are going to buy the new ones and go Oh, that's good. You know, the example that I gave is, you know, I have a copy of uh, Detective Comics number 27, you know, the first appearance of Batman, and it was a reissue, yeah. and it's it's completely identical, except that it's totally different. You know, I mean, anyone can tell <laughs> right. that it's not yeah. a real thing, and that yeah. makes me want the real thing more. It's not like I look at it and say, oh, well, I've, I, I own the first edition. You know, no one is that stupid. It, it keeps the actual vintage toys in people's minds. And I, I think it's good. Yeah. I, and, and for me, like I, I, I've never had that much of an emotional connection for those earlier figures to begin with. So I don't know if that's part of it too. Like <laughs> trying to imagine like, Oh my God, they're, they're doing a retro version of the Jedi line. Would I, would I be feeling anything differently? And I, I don't think so, but maybe that's part of the disconnect for me is that, you know, I obviously I, I love the original figures and 
they they're important, but they don't have the same connection as maybe the later figures in the line do, and maybe that's part of it. I'm, I don't know, but yeah, it's just something that's that's been I think inevitable. It doesn't seem all that surprising. Yeah, I I'm gonna buy them. I I like them. I think but, it's cool. yeah. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna buy them, but I'm not gonna be. You know, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not, not gonna, gonna buy them. I'm gonna buy the Chewbacca. Yeah. yeah <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's yeah. I, I, it's funny too because also the 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 vintage collection Jabba Sail Barge finally released. Right. Yeah, and, yeah, and uh, everyone's Facebook feeds. If you're a Star Wars collector, has been filled with pictures of this. Steve, what's been your reaction to seeing people's sail barges? Um, I mean, I think it's pretty cool, but I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I Dude, think it's a great you are idea, way but too I, political. I'm just like better you I, than me. Well, Jesus, I'm saying I'm glad. I don't, I'm glad I don't. I'm, Yo, I never have any desire to. to you have, have too one, much I, space in your life. You like. You have that I, much yeah. space for a modern toy? I mean, <laughs> I would get it if it was like Padme Amidala's spaceship, like a truly amazing <laughs> toy that wasn't made for collectors. But like these things are as big as a coffee table and they, they cost five hundred bucks. Yeah. Jeez, but man, you could I mean phew, I don't know. It, I've seen a couple of, of the things that did kind of make me smile were like it, it's a vintage collector we know, but it's it's like their kid opening up being super excited about it. That, oh yeah, that's I'm, great. I'm, yeah. No, no, no. But, if my yeah, kids but, were were Kenner age, if my kids right. were were action figure age, I'd buy them instantly. And not, yeah, but, right, but, right. I, but just the just the image of everyone smile. I can't get past the feeling everyone's smiling, but they're actually like unhappy. Like I know <laughs> oh, whenever man, I get that's... like a, like a super big collectible, I'm always like, oh sweet, I got the two and a half foot exclusive Amazon Chewbacca with porg. Oh good, you know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah i you know i i guess I'm, I'm kind of i feel the same way as i do about the the retro collection where i'm like you know if, if people are excited about it that's awesome but it, it's not for me um i don't have anywhere to put it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that that's about it for people losing their minds in the last month steve um, oh wait before no. we get there though i did make this promise to michael cooper mike hooper um uh, the greatest reactionary on the internet um, yeah right I mean, not really reactionary, like politically, but uh, I told him that if people significantly mistake the retro collection for vintage collection, like if it's something that happens on a frequent basis uh, in five years, I will eat a vintage Chewbacca figure. So <laughs> I'm just putting that out there, okay? That's how confident I am that there's going to be no confusion. I'm not talking about weapons. I don't care about weapons. You can keep your weapons and shove them up your nose, okay? Weapons are stupid. <laughs> oh, does the blaster float? Who cares? Weapons are stupid. Um, <laughs> all right. So oh, that was boy. it for people getting upset, Steve. Or was there something else that happened? There, there's more. There's more. Um, this is another one I, I completely missed when it first happened. So I, knew, I had no idea what anyone was talking Do about. Do you even but... Star Wars, Steve? Jeez, man. Not, not really as well as, as most, it seems. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're, you're talking about the, the red letter media guy, right? Yes, Mr. Plinkus. Okay. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. So I'll say this. I, I don't know if you remember this. My only exposure to any of his stuff was I think we were driving up to the Bay Area for a collector's get together. And someone, I don't know if it was you or if it was Phidias, one of the other guys in the car said, Hey, you guys need to see this. And it was his review of The Phantom Menace. Yes. <laughs> Which I, I do remember finding amusing at the time, but that's kind of it. Like I haven't really, I'm not, I'm not in tune with, with what that guy does generally. And so this, I, I don't know. I, I'm not really probably the best to, to provide. All right. All right, all right, see, I, I know you are. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this guy does, he's sort of like the king of the internet snarky reviews, kind of right. like my least right. favorite kind of reviews. Um, but he does them really well. So they're, they're right. very funny. His reviews are funny, but mm -hmm. it's just entirely like, is this really what would happen? Is this right, realistic? Right. Are bombs magnetic in space? You know, those kinds of questions. Just, just, I don't, I do not like this guy at all, but I think okay. he did something yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> I think, I think his project is funny. So what he did was he's trying to make some kind of statement about Disney killing Star Wars and killing his childhood, um, which whatever, whatever so he's taking, like thousands of vintage Star Wars figures 
and melting them in acid in nail polish remover. Right. Which Steve <laughs> nail polish <laughs> next month is April. Mm, I'm getting some ideas here. Oh, no. I don't know what the idea is, but it's going to involve melting figures. <laughs> mm. Okay. No. So he so he melted thousands of vintage figures into like a cube. And this right. is his statement. And everybody lost their goddamn mind. They're trying to dox this guy. They're like posting all these like like all over the internet they're like posting these angry things about like hurting him and hoping he dies and stuff like that. I I don't know. I, uh, my, my argument is that the, the, he's doing something with these figures that's creating art out of them. And yeah, he's destroying them, but he's not, he's destroying them for a reason. He's, I don't, and they're not, yeah. they're not particularly rare. So I don't know, Steve, may, maybe you dislike I, it more than I do. Well, I, there are some I, Jedi figures in there. So maybe you're, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, a little upset. No, I just, I, I, I did watch it finally. And I, I just think it, I don't know. I, I don't, it was kind of executed lamely. I, I think when I saw the final item, if I'd seen it maybe out of outside of the context of that video, I might have thought, oh, that's interesting as like a piece of art. But it was more just the – I didn't think the video was all that great. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Anyway, I yeah. I. It just seems like – yeah. He's, I don't he's, know. He's doing something to get a reaction. It's, right. It's, it's getting a reaction. Um, people take figures and customize them all the time and even destroy them and do things with them. You know, I mean, that's, yeah. and I've seen, uh, you know, if you go to, uh, you've seen other types of art like that, where stuff like star Wars toys or whatever, other kind of toys were obviously destroyed to make it. And I don't know, I, it's never bothered me that much. I think, I think maybe what bothers people more is just the attitude of it, but I don't know. That's, that's just what I think. Yeah, it, it it feels like people. It's still my theory that that 2016 broke everybody's mind, and just everybody is stuck still, uh, in Hillary still Trump. Reeling from that. Everyone's in Hillary Trump mindset, and everyone just has to take a Hillary and a Trump in every single argument, and they just have to just ride it to the goddamn grave and just lose their minds over it. Like every movie, every toy, every action, everything on the internet, Hillary Trump, Hillary Trump. It's just like. Everyone just gotta chill out. Everyone's losing their goddamn mind, Steve. Everyone but you and me, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you, trying. Like, We're like, hanging in there. We're hanging like, in there. Like when people analyze, like in particular, the reaction to Last Jedi. The only oh, way to boy. understand the reaction to Last Jedi is a continuation of the 2016 election. That's the only <laughs> way to understand it. That's the only way that any of it makes any sense. And I'm not saying one side is right or one side is wrong. I'm a part of this problem, you know. I got whipped <laughs> up in it too. We've just lost our capacity for reasoning and we've become so tribalized in such arbitrary lines on everything. <sighs> yeah. Do yeah, you know what we need, yeah. Steve? We need a third eye <laughs> to be able to see the truth beyond oh. good and evil, Steve. We need the Regis, man. He's going to bring us all together. Uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the end goal here. Yes. <laughs> All right, Steve. So let's get to the very special Market Watch with Chris Jorgulius and Fratastic Pete to talk exclusively about the Prop Store Auction. I have the auction manual here. Oh. Um, uh, I think that there's a lot to say. I think there was a lot of scandals that weren't mentioned that I think I want to bring up. Uh-oh. You know. <laughs> is anyone going to mention the fact that they're selling known fakes in here? No? We're just going to let that one slide by. Well, not uh -oh. here on the Kivecast, Steve. I'm going to talk to Chris Jorgulius <laughs> about that decision-making process. I'm not going to blow up his spot online before the auction, but the auction's over. So, time to blow up the spot. Uh, and, of course, also just celebrate it because it's another great moment in the history of Star Wars collecting. Shall we call him up, Steve? Yeah, let's uh, let's get him on the line here. One dollar flicks. Market watch. All 
All right, well, <laughs> after some, uh, we just left like a 15 minute voicemail on uh, Chris's home phone. Uh, but we are joined here by Chris Jorgulius. How's it going, Chris? Doing well. Thanks, guys. Glad awesome. to be here. And uh, also with, uh, with Pete Fitzky, Fantastic Pete, who is uh, trying to get through the flu and is always recording on some kind of weird microphone. How's it going, Pete? Excellent, boys. How are you? Doing well. We call it the Barry White problem. He's just too, mu too much of a radio voice uh, for our, our, our dinky podcast. <laughs> so I think this is the thing. So we wanted to talk to you, Chris, before the auction, um, but then time continued and then the auction happened. So we didn't do that then. So we figured we'd talk about it afterward. Um, so you, what was your role exactly with the prop store toy auction? Um, I was brought in as a consultant. They approached myself and Darren Simpson. Darren was brought in to sort of help with the UK side, and I was help, brought in to help with the, with the US side, just because, you know, time differences and, and being semi, not, not that I'm local, I'm closer than, than Darren <laughs> would be to fly over here, but right. I'm still across cross country. Um, but basically they wanted some people that had, um, a sort of good standing in the hobby and people that know toys. Well, it's, it's good because, you know, there's no, like, respected, knowledgeable Star Wars collectors in L.A. So I, I think <laughs> <laughs> in the, the catalog. So did, did you do all the writing? It has very Jorgulius-esque writing in here. Is this all, 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 all the terms and everything? As opposed to Ron Salvatore-esque writing? Yeah. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's a little bit, a little bit yeah. more... Uh, it's all to the point. There's yeah, no, it's just all like the information. Yes. There's no, there's no quips and things in there. I, early on, we weren't even going to do a print catalog that came later. The idea was like, Hey, maybe we should do the print catalog. You know, prop, prop store guys felt like from a marketing standpoint, it really makes a huge impact. And right. obviously we see that it did. Uh, but early on with the glossary and stuff was really to set a groundwork. So people who didn't know toys, could jump in and they would see acronyms and they would see things and they could be able to go, go to a resource, you know, cause, um, it also mentions, you know, like, uh, websites and documentaries. Those were things, you know, we were just putting in information so that somebody who sort of like, you know, loosely knew toys or just knew the toy properties and wasn't into it wouldn't have to go poking around for them. And then from prop stores experience with other, um, uh, with other auctions, you know, they recently did a huge, uh, TV, uh, prop collection from, uh, James Commissar. He's a very famous, um, prop collector, uh, of TV. And, you know, he's been on TV shows numerous times himself. And they had those little, like, what did you know, blurbs. And it sort of helped they, their, their customers at the time really appreciated those little educational pieces in the middle. And right. so those were interspersed, you know, you get to one about multi packs and then there's, you know, or three packs and you could read this and you can understand what the heck is a three pack and why, why should you care? Now there are three things, Chris, that are slightly controversial and I haven't heard anyone bring up and I'm a little bit surprised because everyone likes to freak out about stuff. And I don't know if they're just too intimidated by you um, or by your status in the hobby. But I would like to bring up these, these three things. And I think you know about two of them. One of them you might not know. Uh, I think they've all been brought up, but go okay. ahead. Well, I, okay, put it this way. We've seen that we're talking about, about how people have been like freaking out about, like people freak out about anything, right? People like lose their sure. mind. And, and y'all put toy Tonys in a goddamn toy auction. Everyone's like, oh yeah, well, you know, at least they labeled them. I mean, whatever. I mean, I guess I said that too because I didn't. I didn't come out swinging. I don't think it's like necessarily the worst thing in the world. But like, why do that? Like, there's a lot of Star Wars toys you could have put in there that weren't Toy Tony. So like, there are. Well, we have. We only had. I think there was only four toy Toy Tonys in there. Yeah, but that's. Like and we got them in from many, a consigner. Right? Sure. But, well, the thing is, you can't deny that they're still collected. If you go to, to Europe, there's tons of guys that have Toy Tony figures. And and even after the, after the scandal erupted, I, for those people who don't know, they're basically original Palatoy card backs and bubbles and real vintage figures, but not maybe not necessarily the combinations that were actually sent out. And a, a dealer named Toy Tony 
had bought these things in the early 90s or late 80s, uh, the packaging, and then he, he was putting them together himself. And then it, and that came to light in, I think, 2013. Yes, and yeah, yeah. anyway, and then that was exposed, and it's like, oh, gosh, and people started looking through. And, you know, so there's lists out there, what's a Toy Tony figure, what isn't. And as I wrote in the description, it's like, okay, it's a real card back. It's a real bubble. It's a real figure. It wasn't sealed at Palatoy. All the components are are real. And the fact is most collectors are still getting those because that's really the only way you can get a lot of those um, German and, and Palatoy packaged figures. So it's not like outright fakes, you know, and reproductions, you know, I think some people are, get, are a little bit too much caught up in the whole reproduction and fake things. Like there's nothing fake about it except, you know, this, if you took a figure that you opened, if you took a card in a bubble right. and opened it up and later on put a figure back into it and re-glued it, people would, people wouldn't think anything about it. You know, you just buy it like, okay, it's just been resealed. Right. So it's the same thing essentially the same thing yeah and sort of but i mean at the same time like because these items were so you know defrauded so many people that it's it's not I, i'm not arguing that they don't have their own intrinsic value and that you know like like a blue harvest like any other kind of fake it has its own kind of value but like I mean, and, and it doesn't seem that Prop Store paid the price for this. It doesn't seem that that backlash was great. And so I don't know why I that know. is. I thought that would be greater, but like, why <sighs> come out the gate and be like, here's these things, which are, you know, mostly, I mean, hey, they're kind of real. You know, like, like why, why do that? Sure. Was, was there like a consigner I, it, it who like also forced a, you to or like? No, no, but we had them and we thought, well, why, why not? And we get them people. It's a real thing. I mean, it's in the hobby. They exist. People, people. You say they're defrauded. Okay, so certainly, people, they're worth less, but they're not worthless. As long as the seller states what they are, people feel like okay, that if you well, if you come right out front and say it, then it's okay. And we thought, well, we'll just do it. And the thing is, it was a good experiment. It's not like I would have. I would, I would, I would say, yeah, we're, we got the, we got the green light now. We'll just start selling all toy Tonys in the auction. But I, you know, I feel like for being out in front of it and only having a few items, that it went over okay. You know, would there be a backlash? I certainly thought of it. And I have emails that said, oh, are we going to get any grief? You know, Darren Simpson was like, we might get some grief. You know, and he had rewritten some of the description that I wrote on the Toy Tonys right. to be a little bit more, um, you know, maybe uh, specific or worded exactly how collectors believe they, you know, how they they refer to them as. But at the end of the day, it's like one of those, it's a judgment call. It's like, what do you, is it really a fake? Is it mostly, is it kind of fake? Is it, you know, I, I agree it's not like a legit factory carded figure, but all the parts are legit. And if you get one that's the right combination of figure with the bubble, <clears throat> you know, it's, is it that different than a resealed figure? So, like I said, I'm, it's not like I'm going to, I'm testing the waters to see what kind of things you can pull over on people. But no, it, I, it, I don't, I don't because think they're so. a real thing, yeah. I, I just feel like yeah. because they're a real thing in the hobby, they're accepted that it was okay to dip our toe in at least with four, four pieces. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't, I think it was clearly enough labeled that I don't think there'd be any claims of, 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 you know, malfeasance or whatever. It, it was just sort of more, it seemed kind of an, an odd move. Okay. And then, then the other one, which is, which is also pretty obvious is including U grades. Now I personally don't care about U grades, so I'm not going to get up, <laughs> up in arms, but a lot of people really do care about U grades. And there's like a ton of U grades in here and you label them clearly and you say they're not, like, it's not going to happen anymore. But again, it's like, it does feel like it's sort of like continuing the U grade hobby and kind of right, like raising it up a bit. I don't know. What, what do you think of that, Chris? Uh, uh, well, I think the thing with the U graded pieces, I mean, r the basic thing on that is like, we, we just had one consigner that had a ton of loose U graded figures. Right. I was like, well, we, I, I, I said, 
you know, we, me, Darren and I felt like we could catch some heat because of the whole U grading thing. But the thing is now the, the companies aren't grading them anymore. Right. And certainly as you're trading them, people who want them now, they probably would go for, and I, you know, I don't even, I didn't follow these as we were doing them and I didn't look after the fact. So I don't know hey, if hey, they Pete, closed how, any how they higher sell? than normal. They did okay. I mean, when you do U grades of the caliber that they did, the 90s and the 90s, I don't know if there were any 95s, but it's all 85s and 90s. Those are always going to do well in an open auction. Um, so I, I thought that they were par for the course for the most part. Is there like an example of one that you can think of that, that went high? Um, I can check real quick. There were a couple that I was cruising through and I was like, oh, wow, that got, got a couple hundred, that got three, four. Um, but let me find one real quick. Okay. Like, like yeah. my, my curiosity is a U90 Imperial Dignitary. Just <laughs> a, a, out of curiosity. Oh no, wait a um, minute. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, a U85 Reyes because Reyes is the figure of the month. Uh, and of course, the U eighty five B wing pilot for Steve. So if you can find those three, <laughs> oh and, man, and, but those are nobody's going to pay a premium on those <laughs> anyway. We know that. You know, the thing is, you know, and they, they may, as more loose graded figures around, it may people be have they may have less interest in general. But I feel like there's no way to sell a U graded figure unless you break it out of the case. You have to send it to AFA, break it out of the case, and they just say relabel it as non U grade. Yeah. And to me, that seems counterproductive. I think the biggest thing with that is the grading companies have decided they're not going to do that anymore. And, you know, there is a supply of these out there. And unless people are willing to, at the, to take, the, you know, take on the expense to go and have them regraded, because nobody's going to just break them out of the case and have loose figures. That's not um, going to happen, right? The, the majority wouldn't, but... <clears throat> You graded started because there was a demand that wasn't being met and people were already doing that behavior leading up to it. And that's why you grading was ultimately created. So it didn't start with you grading. And to be honest, it's not going to end with you grading either. Right. Cause but it, 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 it's a general, deterrent. you know, I saw a couple of comments, of course, Facebook comments in general are down quite a bit, even in the, you know, this past year as a compo you know, as compared to previous yeah, and Honestly, I think so too. Think... And, and guys, I don't think it's as topical as it was a year or even two years ago. I mean, once the company stopped last year, I really haven't seen a lot of backlash. Um, I haven't seen a lot of people jumping on other people for doing that. I know it's still not allowed on certain boards and stuff like that, but it's generally acceptable in the public, just maybe not within our you know, grouping around the archive and the timeline groups and the Imperial Commissary and all the other groups we're part of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the the last thing, uh, Chris, I don't think you're able to predict, but this is okay. the most scandalous thing in the entire catalog. <laughs> okay, what's uh, that? This is a direct quote. Chris can be seen in the Plastic Galaxy documentary film, is a frequent guest on some Star Wars collecting podcasts, and has contributed content to various books and magazine articles. That some we've been having you on our show for ten goddamn years, and we don't. Plastic Galaxy gets a mention. I love Brian Stillman, but he's just oh. a man. We don't get a we don't get named in your catalog. I know you're also on the Vintage Rebellion, oh. those carpet bagging, tea loving folks over there. God damn it! You can take all the U grades of Toy Tonys, but geez, some podcast. Oh. Steve. Do you like that, Steve? We're now some podcast, Steve. <laughs> Do you know what this podcast? We're going to change the name to the Star Wars Collector. You know what? To some podcasts. That's what we're called now. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right, Scott. Sorry. Your, your grievances I, are, are aired. Yes, my grievances you, are aired. Oh, now, now, okay. now let's get to the uh, let's get to the let's get to uh, some of the stuff. The market right? watch. All right. All right. Uh, okay. Pete, so have you have you done the uh, the, the 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 how much did the uh, U graded B wing pilot go for? Oh yeah, I think I whole, saw whole, it. it wasn't wasn't much. <laughs> it's no, Chris no. stated. It, yeah, and, and the, none of the Jedi figures usually go except for like um, the Emperor's Royal Guard or the Emperor. If they're nineties, they might go for something big. But even if you do eighty five versus the nineties, it could do anything special typically. Okay. So that went for sixty. The Reeves went for sixty. <laughs> um, the Imperial Dignitary went for about one eighty, which is par for the course too on that. With the power of the force, you don't get as much of a premium because there's a lot of U graded stuff out there just because of the amount of bad card figures that were out there for a while and the value to 
bad party equation that was in the market being about equal to the LP there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's not much. I mean, take a, a good loose figure and then the grading fee alone is, what, 15 25 bucks. bucks? 25 bucks. Yeah, it is, yeah. Wow. Wow. All right, so, uh, so what, are, what are some more highlights from the auction, Pete? Yeah, let's, oh. let's get into some of those. Yeah, so, um, and Chris, chime in here. I mean, I'm going to go for the obvious one first. I'm yeah. not going to waste right. time. The speeder bike, I think, was the biggest thing. Oh, um, yeah. I have no idea. The auction. You had no yes. idea, really? Yeah, what, what, what happened? <laughs> oh, so we had one of those popular ride-along um, giveaway, mail-away speeder bikes. So the it wasn't um, Big Wheels. Who was the – what was it a rip-off of? Yeah. It, was, it was a Huffy pedal car. Pedal right. car, thank you. Thank right? You. Pedal, like yeah. a pedal car. It was a speeder bike, pedal car in the display in the original shipping box. Right. Yeah. Un, un, unassembled speeder bike. And that's on page 64 if you have the book in front of you. And that brought in just shy of 25K, which I thought was amazing. Um, but oh. then you start to think about it. And um, and Chris, I think I even mentioned this to you when we were doing the pre-article. I had seen a box speeder bike at one point in time, one of the ride-alongs. I had never seen one with a sword display included with it, too. Um, so that was really unique from what I took away. And I think that that did um, just a phenomenal number, was really representative of the audience that we had there. It was cool. It was unique. Um, it was large in size, which sometimes can be difficult. But with the pool of people in this type of auction, I think that fit in much better here than it would have in an eBay situation or any other, even any other auction house, to be quite honest. I don't even know if Higgs could really match it on that particular front. Yeah, and that's and this is also the item that isn't this the one where Steve Sansweet famously said this was the one thing he was looking for, like back in '92, and all of a sudden he got all these offers for like just triple what they were worth, and he couldn't find one. Mm, no, he was talking about I think it was an Australian kid's bike oh. bicycle. Oh, okay. okay. But it's still a cool piece. Like it when it was coming in, I was like, it was my favorite piece. And then after I saw the photography, the spread they did. Because I was like, hey, guys, you got to take all the parts out, blah, blah, blah. So they have a, fo a big photo studio at Prop Store, and those guys had a lot of fun doing the photography for toys. They'd never really done this before, and they did a great job with that. The spread looked great. Um, it was my favorite piece, of the, I think, of the entire auction. And then to watch it, I was there in the room. It was going gangbusters, and it was That's... very fun, you know. And oh, yeah. the consigners were super psyched, you know. It was They were just yeah. really couldn't believe it, you know. <laughs> So, you know, it was the, the guy who was consigning it, I actually found him on Facebook. He posted about it. I said, hey, we got this auction coming up. And he was like, oh, okay, great. He, he drove it down to prop store because they, they didn't want to bother trying to ship it themselves. I said, well, here you go. You can drive it there and drop it off. So they were, him and his friend were psyched to do that. He almost put it together and gave it to his nephew until his friend's like, hey, I think this is worth something. So he, as his friend got on, the, on Facebook and was like, he knew Star Wars and he was like, hey, we got this thing. So when the original owner, who, who was the winner of it back in the day, it just had been in his attic, Wait, I think, the, the whole time. What do you mean time. the winner? <clears throat> okay, sorry, sorry, not the winner, the, the consigner. Okay. The, the original owner. Wait, so, so the original owner just bought it or? Okay, so the original owner had found it. It was in his mom's attic, I think. It was he just got it like last year, or so he had won it back in the day, back in the eighties, nineteen eighty four, I think is when this. Okay, he won the mail away. Okay, he so won right. it. Yeah, right. that's it, what it was, I was, it was a promotion. Okay, it was a yeah. promotion. Yeah, you could you could fill in an entry form and you could win. You know, every every Kmart or something was giving these away. I think they gave away a hundred or two hundred or something like that. Um, and you could fill in the little sweepstakes form and try to win. Anyway, he won that thing, and they gave it to him as it, you know, in that box with the display and all that. And he had it for decades. And last year, he was going through this stuff, and he's like, "Hey, I found this piece," and is telling his friend. And he told his friend, his friend's like, "Hey, wait a minute, this might be worth something." So his friend was into Star Wars, so his friend posted, and that's what I found. But the original guy was about to assemble it and give it to his nephew because he thought it was like, "Oh, something cool." So, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, those guys are they're they have, yeah, they were really excited. Well, I why, was excited why too. Why was the display it. sent with it? I don't know. That's weird. I don't right? know if the display came with the whole thing. 
I can't remember. Does the box say it comes with the display or is it just the speeder bike? Because yeah, another yeah, one's turned bike, up like ride that. Speeder bike, and promotional and promotion display. It's just the whole thing, right? So it's the whole the whole package. Yeah. yeah. And probably the store maybe never put the display up. Okay. You so know, because they, they just handed it off to them when they a... just handed the whole thing off. Maybe yeah. never assembled because the display takes up a lot of space. If you've ever seen one assembled, it's, it's yeah. big enough to hold that speeder bike at an angle. Yeah, um, it's huge. It's a big display. It's like it's it's seriously it's like it's got to be like five feet tall and five feet wide. It's huge, right? So if they didn't put that up, then they, they the whole thing was just in that as one kit. So the whole thing folds out into the box. Right. So you get an awesome un, unassembled mint speeder bike and you get a display that's super rare. I mean, you're in a store displays. That's one of the rare store displays around. You know, there's only, you know, maybe I've seen three or four loose versions of the, or three, four versions of the display, but never only one other one with the speeder bike. And that sort of turned up in last year as well. Another one turned up. It was crazy. So now I, I do have an interesting um, thing about this, display steve you don't have it in front of you do you uh, i have it online not not the catalog okay. well, well don't look at it right now do okay. you do you know the order of what of what counts for third prize second prize and grand prize in this what characters represent each of those no okay no. so on the display <laughs> steve what do you think is the character that represents third prize which was a and or assault catapult or Ewok combat glider. <laughs> is it is it not an Ewok? <laughs> it is not an Ewok. It is C three PO. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, second prize, which is an Imperial shuttle toy, about five hundred of these, okay. to be uh, awarded. Who do you think is on there? <laughs> I'm gonna say an Ewok. <laughs> no, it's gonna be no, Luke no. Skywalker. Okay. All right. And the grand prize, speeder bike, ride on, one hundred grand prizes. Is it Chewy? No, it's an Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I love that that it goes yeah. from third to grand. C three PO, Luke Skywalker, Luke. and random Ewok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's what we bring here on the Kivecast. That's what really matters, not the dollar <laughs> amounts. All right, so what what else is there of interest? That was awesome. I actually really didn't follow that. Um, I basically what happened to me yeah. was the auction. It signed on. I was interested in getting the bot bag that was owned by Harmon Kanjarian. And uh, and it, it went for like four wow. grand, and I was just like, "All right, well, uh, cool, man. I'm gonna go to the gym." <laughs> and uh, oh. I logged off. Sorry, Chris. You had to punch something else when you get there. Yeah, those were yeah. crazy. Those went. I mean, to, and we started the auction. I was like the first four lots with those bot bags, and it was, was like, boom, gangbusters. First lot. It was like, whoa, way higher than I would have anticipated on those. So that was really fun. It was a oh. good good feeling to start the auction off like that so yeah. those were really hot out of the gate yeah what are some other highlights you have Pete? now what about the the gigantic chewbacca plush thing because that's the only thing i cared about i figured oh, yeah. you were gonna you're gonna bring that one up yeah <laughs> the, the yeah. canadian version the store display yes yeah that did really well um 9225 and what do those usually go for 9225 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much. I haven't seen one for sale in a long time. Yeah. Uh, I think that's why that one did pretty well. Even in 92, these numbers that Pete's quoting are after buyer's premium sale. They add buyer's premium there. So that one plus that the the um, provenance that it was Howard Kazanjian's also probably helped some. It probably wasn't super necessary in that. Like It might help a bot bag, but not right. necessarily like that Chewbacca display because it's so rare. Right. I haven't seen one for sale in a long, long time. Um, so I think that's probably a good indication of what like the demand is, seeing that it went. You yeah, know, that's, that's at that level. I think one was and offered it's missing, to me for it, for six grand like a decade ago. So. Yeah, yeah. I believe it. Now that this one didn't did not have the cardboard tag. It usually um, it would have had the Chewbacca that blue Chewbacca plush tag right um the same one that was on the you know the the 20 inch chewbacca figures you know, would have also been on that store display so it would, did not have that tag on it so no. why did howard kazanjian have a canadian store display chewbacca <sighs> i same reason i guess he had the canadian wind up r2d2 
Mike, why on the do you card. Have, why do you have any? I should have asked him, and I didn't even think about it. I should. I really. It would have been. Oh, here's one other thing: is they also. Um, so so the day before the auction, um, we had Howard Kazanjian came to Prop Store and did a two hour Q and A, um, which is available on YouTube now. But he, you know, we had a little audience of about twenty people. Steve was there. Yep. Um, yep. Was he drunk? And. <laughs> <laughs> not quite if he was he, he was keeping it together really okay. well so um and howard was there just you know did a q a we had some questions come in online people on the floor asked questions um there were you know because howard was producer on return of the jedi and on raiders of the lost ark but um one of the he was on the list to get items from kenner because the licensees have to send us you know certain number of pieces back to lucasfilm just for their own archives Right. As they agree to be a licensee, um, so some of those were ones that Howard had sent to him, and other ones were things that he just went into the storeroom and got them himself. You know, okay. it was like, you know, so it, that may not have gone to him specifically; it just may have just been there, and he right. and he took it. I, if I get a chance to talk to him again, I'll try to find out why he had that. Um, it definitely was interesting that that. That was one of the pieces he owned, but I'm glad he I'm glad he still had it and we could put it in there. I think uh, I think it's an underrated piece. You know, it's it's really it's a tough to find display, but I don't know how many people are just into it. You know, you have to be into store displays, and it doesn't really fit this whole store display right and narrative, then, I guess. And then if you're a Chewbacca guy like me, you have to like have space. <laughs> you have to. Have, yeah, he takes up a bit of space too. So, yeah. but it's it's a cool piece, you know. It's just, you know, it was made famous. I think Steve Sansweet had a, some photos of him posting posing with it years ago, you know, decades ago, and yeah, a couple of his books. Um, yeah. But there's some talk. Some people think it's a that that it could potentially be a, a a retail item and not a store display. But I've never seen indication of that, and. It doesn't make sense that they would have made a 20 inch and then a 48 inch. Yeah. It would have been pretty expensive. So I, I, I think the store display is that's that's what it is. Awesome. Any, uh, anything else, uh, Pete? Another big one was probably the Pop Lou soft copy version of the Ewoks coins. So the second right. series from the Ewoks, and that did pretty well at 7900. And then it actually had the. Um, Artwork that went with it, but that actually went unsold. It had a seven thousand dollar reserve. It looked like though, so that was a bit high on that piece. Huh. Yep, did not sell. You know, you should have had, you should have uh, had the Cavcast uh, do the did you know for that? <laughs> It'd be four pages of contradictory information <laughs> from James nonsense. Gallo and Yehuda, and then <laughs> <laughs> total nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> I still yeah. don't think we ever got it right. I think we had Ron on there talk about it for like half an hour, but then we like let you who to tag it with a couple more minutes. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, Pete, then we'll, we're gonna look forward and we'll hype up your uh, your write up in the on the in the blog. Um, the looking through this, you know, the one thing I realized I want is I want a sealed land of the Jawas. I, I don't care how much it's sold mm. for here, <laughs> but I realized you know I recently found a, a picture that I took with my mom when I was like three and I'm holding on to the, the pod. And so I realized oh, like, that's like my favorite toy when I was a kid, it must have been. But yeah, anyways, that, that's on my hit list. So if any of you are space freaks. Yeah. yeah, oh, let me tell you one more thing though. We're gonna have- Yes. The, um, we're, we're gearing up for the next auction will be in the, the UK prop store. So Darren will be, really be the main man there in, in terms of the toy consultant. I'll, I'll be assisting um, you know, he was assisting me on this one here, but I'll definitely be helping him and he'll, he'll have more of a role on that end, but that one's, that'll be the next one. So it'll be a UK prop store auction. So we'll be seeing some of that. Awesome. And, uh, coming up and we'll be, we'll see you guys at the, uh, at the archive party. I don't know if you know this, uh, Chris, but one of the, we're, we're doing this kind of like we're making posters kind of like limited edition posters. Um, yeah. and, and one of them features, uh, Steve and I talking and there's a Christian Julius, uh, Easter egg. Cause I'm wearing a John Deere hat. 
So, oh God, uh, that's that's Where the just hell did you get a, John uh, a, a friend of mine, that's Ted, funny. who who he's like an actor. He's a he's a commercial actor in L.A. and I think he worked on a John Deere commercial. And it was sunny, and you know I got skin cancer, and my face burns off when I go into the sun. So we were at Universal Studios, and he's like, "Here, wear this hat," and I'm like, "This is going to be the best." Like Easter egg for Kivecast. I mean, not Kivecast for some collectible podcast fans. Right. So some, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh man, that's uh, good. Cool. Well then, uh, oh, we're, thank you guys. We're, we're yeah. Back to our, our reusing. Um, that was a long way to say that a U eighty five reuse costs sixty bucks, Steve. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're just gonna edit the rest of it out and, and just have that. Market Watch. Steve, you actually sent, you're doing a little bit of a tricky thing. I know you love reuse because <laughs> you made a vocab that is actually like a nugget. So that's yeah, fine, Steve. Yeah. I'll let you do it because I love you. And so here we go with the vintage vocab. The word of the month is photo art. Let them folks change our vocabulary. Change our vocabulary. It's vintage. All right, Steve. So, what? Oh boy, we need a definition of photo art, Steve. What is yeah. it? Hey, you know that theory we haven't talked about it in a couple of years, right? Yeah, that's so it's true. always good. It's, it's always good, point. good to refresh. It is my favorite part of the hobby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I figured I had a couple of different angles to let this slide, so I'm, I'm glad that it did. Um, so. I guess if you want to describe photo art simply, it's basically a photographic print that's manipulated to make it, you know, enhanced for printed packaging. So uh, we're talking about the original photo art for Reese, obviously, and uh, <laughs> we've kind of alluded to some of its details, but I thought this would be a good time to like to really. really Go for it here. Yes. Well, I've been, um, I've been, it's, it's I've been one dating, of those. Uh, I've been dating my girlfriend for about 10 months before I let her see the Chuseum. Um, she had been, actually been to Paul Chu's house and she'd seen Ron's stuff, but like I, I got nervous because the first time I told her I had a Chewbacca collection, she laughed at me and called me Eric Foreman. Um, <laughs> which it turns out is a good thing because. Hey, uh, yeah. You want to be with girls who are attracted to Eric Foreman, not Ashton Kutcher <laughs> or Wilder Wilder right. Um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> maybe Mila Kunis. Um, so uh, it was like she really wanted to see it, but like it wasn't in good enough condition. So I spent like half an hour getting it together. Yeah. And definitely my second photo art of Chewbacca was the thing that she seemed to really like the most. She really yeah. – yeah. um, <clears throat> she kept on saying things like, you need to bring all of your Chewbacca stuff out of this room and into the, into the main, you know, like more <laughs> in the house. Oh, boy. Like, oh, yeah, man. I've definitely – I, one second. I just, I, I just peed my pants. So I just, I just gotta change them. I don't want to get on the floor. So yeah, fo photo art is. It's, the, it's your bread and butter. It's That's the your... beginning of two D production. Yeah. If you don't have Matthias's book, too late. It's sold out. We told you it would, suckers. Ha ha ha. It's a great book. Buy it on the secondary market while it's still uh -huh. twice what it costs, because right. it will eventually yeah. be five times what it costs. Um, and so, what's really magical about photo art is that. Kenner was given this image by Lucasfilm, right. and they just had to figure out the logistics of making a card back. Yeah. And they didn't have computers, and so they just kind of nope. had to figure what would work. And yeah. Yeah. in the Empire time, they were like, hey, uh, this is a, a card back of C-3PO, but it's mostly Chewbacca. Yeah, go with it. No worries. Hey, this is a card back of, of R2-D2, but it's mostly C-3PO. Mostly C-3PO, yeah. Yeah, just go with it. And then right. they get to Return of the Jedi, and they are just, like, brutal. They're like, we cannot have any ambiguity here. So right, right. If, you, if you look at the Reese card back, there's no trace of C-3PO in the production version. None whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. You look at the photo art, and you can see why. C-3PO yeah. has been decapitated by an airbrush. <laughs> yeah. I almost feel yeah. like we should do a do a, a vocab on the word airbrush. I mean, that was... But that's, that's kind of, yeah, I was kind of angling for that, too, because we you, you realize how much some specific pieces of photo art have, have done to them, and this is one of those where it is kind of crazy how much 
it's been manipulated. So yeah, you have 3PO's head completely removed, and then part of his arm is also yes. <laughs> airbrushed out. And this, this is, is all you're... covered up in the carded figure. Yeah, right. By the little uh, the the holder the 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 uh, little green rectangle that covers right. up the the figure. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, and then you've got you know in, in the background too all the <laughs> your favorite Venetian blinds they're they're yes. really manipulated there uh, and it, you just it stands out obviously way more when you see the original piece compared to the to the card back because there's so much they had to do just to make it work um, but yeah it's uh, and he's got his his cup which, yes. which will come back again he's, he's got always got he's always he's got his drink in hand his and. Drink. Uh, I don't know. It almost feels like his hand is even bigger. Than, yes. It's like they enlarged his hand almost. I, I, it may not be, but it just has that look to it. He where looks it's... like Clawful from He-Man. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I, I, you can hear it on the on the podcast. I'm leaning back and putting my hand behind my head like I just said something really smart. He looks like Clawful from He-Man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, th this really is great photo art. You have like salacious crumb. You have what looks like a weequay, basically just airbrushed into being a ghost. He's kind of a ghost. Yeah, um, yeah. And and it's amazing because if you look at the actual photo art, it's very simple. It's not busy at all. There's no, just no. the Reyes and the Venetian blinds. Uh, oh my God! I just realized something, Sky. This what, is crazy. What, Steve? This is this picture is the cut scene. He's about to punch Elephant Man. Look to the left. Oh my God! That's it. <laughs> what He's, the? You're yeah. right. Elephant Man is right on the left, and is Salacious Crumb is on his shoulder, and C3PO is yeah. in between them. If you do a matchup of the storyboard, it matches up perfectly. That's this crazy. Is this is Reese <laughs> squinting his eyes, like you said. What, do, you, do you have the exact text in front of you? Oh, yeah. Hold on one second. <laughs> because we're about to narrate the exact moment of yeah. this card back art. Okay, so <laughs> his three eyes narrow angrily. <laughs> yes. These That's are exactly what they're doing. And he's he's scowling. This is actually some good acting by Tippett or, or whoever's doing it. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think this is Tim Rose uh, who, who was doing the performance for for Reese, yeah. yeah. And, and just, you can actually now look at it and tell that he's actually kind of cocking his, his, his arm back. And like, <laughs> there's now anger. Where I saw kind of a blank, vacant face, we now yeah, see right. anger. I mean, he's clearly drunk, but he's also angry. Yes. Uh, yeah. He's drunk Whoa. and angry. Steve, this is great. You made a discovery, dude. Yeah, it doesn't happen too often, but yeah, that, I'll... That's wow. That's pretty crazy. I was wondering if 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 it happened, and there you go. That's it right there. Yeah, because huh. and so then in theory, right after this moment, they would get into a fight, and then C three PO would bump into the the walking drink tray, aka R two D two. Yeah, exactly. Wow, yeah. Th this is an amazing discovery. I'm gonna have to put that in the show notes. Steve discovers something about <laughs> because I don't think that this deleted scene has ever been shown. I yeah. I, I wonder if it's on like filmumentaries that that great Facebook page that has a lot of cut scenes. I, I don't know. I personally have never seen it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I mean, it, it could very well exist somewhere. Um, right. But yeah. Well, I'm, I'm awesome. just going to put in Google cut scenes, re -ease. Uh, Wait, now one second. There is an image. Wait a minute. It's Yak Face. Is that, is that? Are you sure? Is it Yak Face? Yes. It oh. is Yak Face. And Yak Darn. Face actually has uh, Salacious it's Crumb. Salacious Crumb is with Yak Face. So it's still the same scene. Same scene, but they swapped out the, the giant alien for a slightly less giant alien. Yes. Because okay. Ifat Mon doesn't quite make sense. <laughs> he probably wouldn't have uh, he probably wouldn't have fit in there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so there hey. are there are pictures and stills of this out there. Um I'll I'll include that on the show notes, and you'll be looking at them right here, and you'll be like, "Okay, that's not Efant Mon." Yeah, it's it's, a, it's not quite as as crazy a discovery, but I guess it's it's something, right? <laughs> Wait, Steve, do you know what's the stupidest thing right now? What? Do you know what I want? Oh no, I want the Jabba Sail barge. 
<laughs> because then I could set up a Rigi's and a Yak face with a Slacious Crumb on them and have them fight just like in the yeah, movie with the C-3PO. See? They, they'll get you one way or the other. And C-3PO got knocked over, and, and you can see it in, in this picture. Like, he got knocked over in the fight. Okay, so listen. If you bought the barge and you haven't uh, stopped listening to this podcast in protest because I'm such a horrible snob, uh, <laughs> do me a favor and recreate this scene and send us a picture, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, that's... Uh, yeah, I, I, there's there's a lot of things crossing crossing over here. That's That's good. Um, well, cool. Yes. There you go. I don't want to grow up, but my toys are Gus, for kids. you got a million toys and toys are Gus. she can play with. I don't want to grow up, I'm a grow up. Gus. And Steve, every once in a while, we are we are joined by the supreme uh, leader of the Star Wars Collector's <laughs> Archive, Gus Lopez, and he is in the news for some things he recently picked up and for some things that will be happening in celebration. And we just like to have him on whenever we, uh, whenever we can. And he's actually already on. How's it going, Gus? Good. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Um, I feel like the last time we, we were talking, you were in South America and we, we just lost you all of a sudden. Yes. <laughs> so we're, we're picking up where we left off. I know. Now I'm in Seattle. So Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we were talking something about chocolate wrappers, but we don't care about chocolate wrappers anymore. You know what we okay. care about? <laughs> The most important thing in the world is what is Gus Lopez's feelings on Reese? On Reese, the character or the action figure? Both. Both. Okay. Um. Well, you know, uh, I don't know. I liked. I'm always. I, I when I saw Return of the Jedi, I was always stunned by the uh, Jabba's palace characters, like the his his all his henchmen and so on. So I actually thought they were pretty cool aliens. Um. So I liked Reese. He's one of the better ones. Um uh you know uh and so yeah no i've always been a fan i thought the action figure is also great a great likeness of the character um so yeah he's he's one of he's one of the i think i put him in sort of the top half of the jabba character so i kind of i'm kind of a big fan okay now, do you have anything particularly cool with the figure in your in the boba cabana not really <laughs> i no. mean like it's funny because like almost every character i got something right not much on Reese, I have to say. I'd have to think hard, but I don't think I have anything. I don't think I've ever, ever had anything on Reese that's that interesting. Now, I, I thought do. that you had the trinoculars, but is that actually Ron who has those? Is that who? Sorry, who did you say? Is it Ron that has the trinoculars? Oh, Ron? Ron may have them. Yeah, they turned up. I think Ron does have them. Um, they, um, they, they, we, you know, there were several of those things that turned up together. And I think you're right. I think Ron is the one who has that. And just but, just to make it clear, there was a it was an unproduced accessory to reuse where he would have binoculars, but that were trinoculars. <laughs> trinoculars, right. yeah, right. Because it I, could only be used with like the reuse character. That's I mean, it, yeah. right? <laughs> see, Custom trinoculars. That doesn't make sense because one time I was talking to Ron about your 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 guys, you know, going around Cincinnati and finding stuff. And he yeah. said that the joke was always that if there was any kind of like unproduced thing, like no yeah. one cared about it, and they would just say, "I just Gus probably wants it," and they just kind of push yeah, no, it that, onto that you. Totally happened. A lot of times there were there were a bunch of those like that. Like the yeah, I think I got I think it was in the same find that it got that like backpack mounted like rocket launcher thing on the Leia Bausch figure. Right, um, right, right. That was in the same find, I believe. Uh, but but it was like a bunch of, the, a few Kit Bash figures. Uh, yeah, right. But yeah, unproduced stuff, a lot of times people passed on them, which which is, I love that stuff. That's some of my favorite prototypes. Whereas I think other people were more into, you know, like if we found like unique stages of making a toy or something like that, they be might, might be more into that than I, I am into it. Um, and so, yeah, it always sort of worked out in the end. Yeah. Well, I, I think Ron should just give you the trinoculars, just you know, just <laughs> yeah, that idea. Just for giving you the grief on that. Okay, but we're not we're not actually here to talk to you about Reese. Um, there's a couple things here on our show notes, and sometimes Gus, when I know that I'm going to talk about something on the podcast, I think it's better if I don't know much about it. So okay. I saw you post about this, and then I just said I'm just going to turn it off, and I haven't looked okay. at it. So talk to me like I am the ignoramus that I am. Um, what, tell me about the John Mollo sketchbook. What, what is this thing? Okay. So basically John Mollo is the guy who did all the costume design for Star Wars, you know, for a new hope for Empire Strikes Back. He was, uh, 
He was he was nominated and won the Oscar for costume design for A New Hope, and I think he was nominated for Empire as well. But I don't, I don't think he won it for Empire. Um, anyway, John Mollo, he recently passed away. He um, and uh, basically his family was putting up a bunch of his stuff uh, for auction, his, his estate. And there was, there isn't a whole lot of John Mollo stuff out there. There have been sketches in the past that have made it out, but very limited uh, in auctions. And uh, so this auction had some individual sketches. Uh, some of them, it got very confusing, though. It was a very difficult auction to navigate because some of these sketches were from back in the day, so in the mid-'70s, and then some mm-hmm. were recent ones that were done in, like, the last decade. Huh. And, but you, but if you sort of – you can sort of tell by the style, very different style. But he had started doing, I think, some shows and some contact – with Star Wars fandom in later years, and so I think he started to, to re-sketch a bunch of characters. I don't think it was any attempt to deceive anybody, and the auction house was pretty clear about if it was done post the film. They, they, they were consistent in the labeling, but it was also subtle names, so if that makes any sense. They were so they were clear they were consistent in how they named them whether they were made before the movie or after, but you had to sort of pick up on the language and terminology they were using. But anyway, there was a, there was there weren't that many original pieces, but the the grail of the stuff in, the, in to my most overused word grail um, was this a New Hope sketchbook. He basically did had this book that he kept with him when he first met with Lucas until he was done designing the costumes for Empire Strikes Back. And this book had sketches of everything, like Grand Moff Tarkin, Princess Leia, Ben Kenobi, Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, TIE pilots, Luke, Han, you know, all the Cantina aliens. I mean, you just go Jawas, like name a character. He was he sketched it in this book. So I was like, all right, I'm going to win this thing because this is the prize. I mean, there was a couple other individual sketches that are nice. And I did buy a couple other. I bought a couple Empire sketches. I bought the Han Hoth jacket uh, outfit sketch and the Han Bespin sketch. Um, which is nice because I recently picked up Harrison Ford's Han Bespin jacket, uh, so I have them in the same room now. Um, but this book was the was like sort of the masterpiece of the whole thing. It was um, it basically is just hundreds of pages of sketches, and it's a huge book too. And so what I did is I put it in our living room in a display case on a sort of like a little book stand in, a, in a sort of an acrylic case. But next to it, I have an iPad where I scan every page of it. So like nice oh, scans cool. of every page on PDF and then people can flip through it on the iPad oh, and awesome. view, you know, look at the pages so they don't have to flip through the pages of the book. Right. So, uh, so I, I like, I like that. I like hearing yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> As, the archivist. The archivist like that. I, I read. Oh man. Yeah. This thing is just, it's like a, it has this look of like a, an ancient document almost of, of yeah. Star Wars. You know what I mean? It's, oh. there's a lot of crude, designs and then you kind of see stuff get closer and closer to what you actually ended up with um man yes yeah, totally it's awesome the early pages have that like you know mccurry-esque vader and all that kind of the wilder like samurai looking characters right you also have um yeah and you also have some i think some of the sketches even have the early yeah you know, i have to go back through it but like yeah like um they might have even had it when i might have this wrong but we're because originally like luke was going to be female character i think the early ones even have that but it, it was really early like the early ones are 75 the first wow. sketches i think when he started to and he wrote the dates down and um and the, and they actually the at some point he also did an index to the book and the book has some other films that he worked on as well there was also an empire strikes back sketchbook that went up in the auction um and uh and i i, I bid on it after didn't close in the auction didn't sell in the auction but i bid on it after the auction and a friend of mine bought it um, and picked that up. So that was cool that there was a cool Empire book. But for yeah. me, the Hope one was the really – that was the, the one I really wanted because it was like the groundbreaking you know, new film, the thing he won the Oscar for. It just was such an awesome piece. I, it's just one of my favorite pieces now because uh, it's, so, it's, it's just a historical document of, from Star Wars. Yeah. yeah, there's a. I don't know if if you, Sky, if you've seen. There's this one page that has. It's all weapons and belt buckles and little weird costume accessories, and it's like that is the the costume language or the accessory language of Star Wars, kind of all laid out in one page. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, no, I I haven't really seen this at all. Yeah, um, you gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta yeah, and, check and it out. One cool thing was the when this was part of my my. Um, justification for buying this book is I was just sort of doing some estimation of what the individual art would sell for 
And the book was expensive, but on a per art basis, it was like a bargain compared to what people paid for individual sheets of his art. So, you know, because you get like hundreds of sketches of major characters and probably the first sketches of many of these characters, you know, in a book, hundreds of them for what would be the price of like, you know, 15 of the of the like you know individual pages that that were sold uh so yeah yeah so I, I, i'm super pleased with the purchase and because it ended up with you they're not going to be cut up so yeah that's right <laughs> I, I, I assume like because this isn't like we don't talk to you about prop stuff very often yeah. i don't really know why we're not you know it's nothing to do with toys but i realize this yeah. is whole steve's like preservation thing so i'm just kind of letting this go steve i hope you're enjoying this this whole like yeah. uh preservation yeah. and behind the scenes, you know, Rinsler-esque uh, adventure here. Can we talk about the white witch now? What does that yeah. mean? Yeah. What's, what's the, that's a toy thing. What, that's what's a very, that's a very thing? toy thing. Yeah. So tell yeah. me about the, why is the words white witch on the show notes, Gus? Cause, uh, white witch is uh, a vehicle from the droids animated series. And, um, and basically flown by, uh, uh by, um, 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 like George Dusad and Thal Jobin, and um, and basically the reason it's exciting in the toy world is for years we know that Kenner had made a prototype of the White Witch, but nobody knew where it was. That we thought it might have been lost for all time. There's photography of it uh, out there, and and you know I've known about the White Witch for decades. That such a vehicle was at least created in prototype form, but uh, you know. Given that we've like scoured like pretty much every Kenner employee, hundreds of Kenner employees we've spoken to, and you know could never find the White Witch, and so in the past year, um, through um, you know some help from Tom Derby, I was able to acquire the White Witch, um, and we you know both of us were stunned the thing still existed and was around, and and the piece I got what, what's what's really cool about it is. It is exactly the one. So there's there's a couple different in photography. They might actually be the same one. There's one with gray primer in some of the photos, and then there's one with right. finished. Are, yeah. yeah, and those are on. They've been up. Those pictures have been on the archive for for ages. So yeah, for we'll, ages. Yeah. 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 This is some of the oldest hobby lore. I mean, yeah. this was yeah. talked a lot about on on Raskva, right? On the yeah, the, yeah. The pre-rebel yeah. scum boards i remember looking through and there was a ton of talk about the white witch wasn't there even some kind of controversy gus about that there was yeah like some you know people had claimed about owning boxes for it or own, you know owning it and uh but uh but Wait, you know, well, pretty one much of those seen... people wasn't uh go on to have a reality tv show was it or was that was that one of his stories? there was there was a story about yeah there was uh although i think i think i think or was that the droid was, skiff that was droid skiff and okay. he was there was another person who uh who uh, had, which is a, a very controversial topic uh, to deal with, but there was some packaging from the White Witch that surfaced that, um, that, that, it, that, you know, that, that has some weird background to it, but there's a few examples of that. Um, but, um, but yeah, the, the actual toy, nobody knew if it existed. And what's interesting though, so we see it in photography form in gray primer, and then you see it in sort of finished paint job. Right. And they may be the same vehicle. It may be that they repainted, they painted the gray one or, you know, they may have made multiples. Who knows? What's interesting is the one I got completely matches the one in the color, the color photos, the color, the color one. Like it's exactly that one. Uh, right. So it's, it's amazing. It's like a perfect match to, I have a few other pieces like that, like the star tots I have, the vehicles and the figures. Those are uh, because I only made one set of those. Those are a perfect match also to the photography. Uh, and then the crazy thing is I was also able to get um, the Thal Jobin and Jordi Sat figures that were in that shot from uh, two other collectors, and both are in prototype form. So the Thal Jobin's hard painted hard copy, and the Jordi Sat is a um, a proto molded figure. Mm. And and so you know you know how it is these days trying to get collectors to give up pieces. <laughs> but, yeah, but I was just yeah. Like, determined to like, oh my god, I gotta like you know reunite the dream team um and uh and so they were it was they got some help from some friends to to do some trades that allowed me to get those two figures the r2 hasn't surfaced there's also an r2 in some of the shots right so that but uh but it's amazing to have the, actually the figures and isn't it just like i'm not a big fan of like there are a lot of collectors that collect like the regular action figures that were in the photography to me that's kind of lame and boring as hell but right. these these are actually prototypes that were used in the photography, so they're they're somewhat interesting to me. 
Wow. Okay, so you don't have the R2, so I don't know, Steve. Maybe we'll cut this out. It's not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I'm just uh, – because I'm, I'm in a little bit of a provocative mood. Uh, yeah. Can I poke around at that uh, potentially fake uh, 2D White Witch material out there? Yeah, what's, yeah, what's, yeah, the, what's the story yeah. on that? I, I don't, I've never actually heard about that controversy. There's, yeah, I mean it, it – and you can talk to different people. You get different perspectives. Right. Um, there, there was a, there was a, this was in uh, circa early two thousands where, um, basically one collector who is was fair, fairly notorious for having uh, basically stolen money from other collectors. So he already had sort of a, sort of a corrupt background. He had found. Uh, so, so keep in mind, we've never found packaging from a whole bunch of various, you know, well-known sort of unproduced uh, Star Wars items. So he comes, he he finds multiples huh. of White Witch packaging, uh, and they're called comps. He, but White Witch right. packaging, t- droids, Tatooine skiff, Lando Empire Strikes Back 12-inch figure, the outfit cards for like Luke and Leia for those like weird disco outfits and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, and the power of the force X wing. So he turns up packaging and they're all in quantity. So they're all like, you know, eight to 12 of each of these. And they're all like these unproduced things that span about eight years of star Wars, Yeah, you know, form of (laughs) comps that have never surfaced before. They've never in that form. And so a lot of collectors have bought them up. A lot of our friends own these things. And many people believe them to be real. I have a different opinion, but you know, uh, right. like I think I think what I've stated is enough to get me to go risky. Um, so the problem is that the people that bought them from this guy, um, you know, they weren't able, they weren't in a position to be able to uh, audit or validate whether these things are, um, whether these things are, are, you know, they couldn't talk to the source because it was this one guy, the one guy who is a proven corrupt, basically criminal collector. Uh, had is the only person that spoke to the source where these came from, so so it's it's hard to um, get any real you know information on this stuff, but I think there's enough that made me suspicious, um, and so I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that stuff. Okay, and then and then is this a collector who's still around? No, he's, okay. um, he's 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 but he's a, one of those. He's, his name comes up whenever they do those threads on like notorious like scumbag collectors. Uh, okay, name, so, so okay. what what so what? Why don't you say his name then? Yeah, okay. Uh, Gary Pedersen is his yes. name. Yes. Okay. That, uh, yeah. I was trying to figure okay. out which of the which of the famous names. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm usually not shy about like outing scumbags, and yes. he was he was he was he was awful. <laughs> he was he he took a lot of friends of mine for a lot of money and and did bad things. So, but he's the one who produced these things, and uh, I mean there are other, but you know just to keep open mind on it, there are other people that contend they're authentic and so on but uh, uh you know i just i happen to be very skeptical well i mean he could have found them and they they could be real but yeah i mean that's yeah, potentially that, yeah that, that's yeah. kind of enough now that's some bad some bad stuff you know the gary yeah. Pedersen stories yeah but there's a lot of good stuff happening um yeah. we've sort of announced it here and there but uh Uh, I just randomly was thinking the other day and realized it was the 25th anniversary of the Star Wars Collectors Archive. So uh, we're going to be celebrating your uh, your your site and uh, all the work that's been done out the years by by you and your friends. Um, Yeah, I'm working. I'm trying to work on a uh, Archive 25 logo. I'm asking Lobart to work on it. I might ask other people see if they have come up with ideas. Nice. Um, we'll, we'll kind of see about that. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's going to annoy anybody, but uh, can we talk about the panel? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah so, hey, we're going to do a panel, Steve. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be uh, basically kind of a a history of the archive, but in a in a unique way for you, right? You had, you had an idea of what you wanted to frame it as. Well, yeah, it's it's going to be sort of like a round table with the sort of with with Gus and Chris and Ron and trying to get a lot of those old stories, but then also some anecdotes and basically try to trace the history of the hobby through the archive. That's that's right. kind of the idea. Um, yeah. And then sort of at the end, we'll just sort of say, oh, and there's a podcast at the end um, <laughs> <laughs> and and a blog. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's it's funny because uh, Chris Fawcett. He really wants the rough draft by 
uh, the end of next weekend, but my spring break is next week. So I, I, hate, yeah. I hate to tell them, but I'll, I'll be, I'll be doing it a couple of days late. Um, oh, yeah. but it, it definitely will be done, but it's really exciting. Um, I'm, I'm really, it'll be really fun. I think, uh, just to kind of get everybody up there and get them going. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That should be fun. Um, so I, I should be sending you a bunch of emails, Gus, uh, with, with ideas and thoughts. Um, and, and also, Gus, we yep. are having the archive party. And, That's right. Uh, th this yep. is the last episode before the archive party. Um, and you are once again donating a box of C-3PO cereal to be I am. Yes, yes. So nice. And I'm donating a box. So, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, people have a craving for uh, it's been it's been quite a few years since we last did this, so yeah, yeah there's be... some new takers that want to try it. Yeah, it'll be um, interesting to see what what seven years have done to the <laughs> to the three I, know. Years. I, I can tell you, we've gotten a lot of interest. Like, like I, I think we might actually have to start charging like a twenty dollar entrance fee because like people wow. really yeah. want to participate. Because we have um, too many entrants, there won't be enough cereal. Yeah, with yeah. That. Like, yes. I mean, I have more than one box, but I don't know if I want to take. Too many boxes of this. Yes, yeah, may, maybe one box. But we're we're really excited about it. Uh, we might also have people throw pizza in my face. I don't know. We, we got lots of ideas out there. Yeah, yeah. Now, how, and we we have like a lot of people attending this time, right? Like, well, it's it's actually it's it's fewer people, but fewer? Okay. but I think it's going to be the venue is a little smaller, but I think the venue is a lot. It's a lot cooler than a hotel yeah. banquet room. That's okay, nice. Yeah. That's um, nice. So it's it's going to be the same vibe, but uh, but different. I think it's going to be yeah. it's going to be better. It's why we um, call it the yeah. underground Star Wars rave. It's going to be... right this this year's the rave. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, I ever, did I ever tell you guys about the? Yeah, there was one year that I was. I mean, I, some of the celebrations I go party hopping and hit the different parties. And one of the years, I think it was the first year we did the archive party. I got invited to a whole bunch of different parties that that were that night. And so we just I went with this like crew of friends, just party to party. And it really hit me like the archive party just blew away every other party on on, on so many levels. It, it, and I don't know if I told you guys that, but it was like some of the parties had like celebrity guests and some of them had like extravagant gifts and all that stuff. But it was just I don't know. There was just something just much more genuine and real and like true geek out fandom at the archive party that was just so much more fun. Uh, it was very interesting contrasting all the different parties. I mean, they were all fun, but it was like the archive party is on a whole other level. Yeah, well, well, thank wow. you, and I think we're gonna yeah. we're gonna continue with that with the fourth one. And Steve and I just have to wait for all of the nice contributors to actually contribute what they're contributing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, there's still some people. Uh, uh, we're we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. Okay, I think yeah. I sent mine right. <laughs> I sent mine. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, you're all good. Okay, I'm yeah, good. Okay, yeah. 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 yeah, I always forget. I have to tell people, like, remind me if I owe you money. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, there's like yeah. five or six other questions you got. We got to ask you again, but we'll take we'll take that off the air. But okay. uh, awesome, yeah. Gus. Well, well, we'll yeah. uh, we'll get back. someday. We'll complete the art, the the interview about chocolate wrappers. <laughs> all right, um, that's next, cool. Next time you're in South America, we'll we'll try that again. Yeah, that's right. I know totally. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah, see you thanks, see you within the month, and uh, okay. uh, good luck find that R two. <laughs> All right, good talk to you guys. Bye. Yes. All right, Steve. Well, let's see. You, we've we've got the 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 vocab. I guess now that photo art, which is not at all a nugget, even though it's a nugget and it's on the archive. How about we get to a nugget from the archive? It is a nugget from the archive. Tis a nugget. Oh my god, they're gorgeous. From the archive. Sounds good. All right, Steve. So we did the most important thing, which is the photo art. Now let's get to some boring sculpt. Was it yeah. wax? Is it acetate? <laughs> Go for it. I'm gonna fall uh, asleep. I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do my best to. Uh, and it's gonna be with you know, as usual, Ron's writing that's gonna help make this more interesting. Okay. Um, so yeah, as we, we, you know, we, we, I think we all, we both, we all saw most of this stuff at Ron's. Ron has quite a few awesome Rees pieces and, you know, one of which is the original wax sculpt for the figure. Um, and in his write up on the archive, he, he mentions, he doesn't go into too much detail about the actual 
piece, but more the 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 fun, strange reusedness about it, I guess. Yes. Um, so he, he does, you know, he goes into how on, on the old Wikipedia, he's an alcoholic assassin on the run, and he ends up taking care of Jabba's hideous burping frog dog. I, I kind of like that <laughs> that backstory as well. I feel like we should just keep that canon along with all this other stuff. But um, yeah, so he's got the, the wax sculpt. There's not really much you, you need to say about it other than it looks like it's in really great shape. Uh, and then he's got a painted hard copy and an unpainted hard copy to go with it. And uh, I guess the trinoculars too. So we, he's got a nice set up here for for this weird character um yeah, that, that's that's quintessential ron starting off yeah uh, how he doesn't really like this figure that much but right, he then right. has f- like four no yeah four grill four grills or five grills it's, yes it's yeah, yeah yeah five yeah. absolute grails that if anyone decided they wanted to be a reese collector they would be yeah the, the linchpin of their entire collection um, yeah but yeah. it's funny but i mean i want to be careful because obviously ron's a friend but also yeah like, yeah the way that he talks about not thinking that it's a cool character like i think he would like cut off his own foot before he would sell one of these items like he cares <laughs> that much about the toy process and about having nice yeah. toys and good displays i, I think right. sometimes people get a little bit twisted with like some of the old guard that like ah, oh, they don't really care about what they have it's, it's, like, that's, it's like yeah that's not true Ron does yeah. not like selling stuff or trading stuff or anything like that even if it's something as lame as the rancor keeper or reuse um yeah he probably yeah. appreciates the sculpt the reuse sculpt more than a reuse than an average reuse focus collector would um right even though he thinks that reuse is lame <laughs> um so basically steve stop trying to get the sculpt from ron would you so is yeah, right. Uh, I like the uh, the characterization of of him as the space version of Hunter S. Thompson. That that also <laughs> seems to really work well, given the uh, the penchant for smoking and alcohol and uh, yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I like it. He's, um, he's in he's into dust ups, and it also includes yeah. the link to the trinoculars, which we mentioned with Gus. Right, um, right. Oh, that was one thing I for, I did forget to mention earlier on, which which is sort of related to the trinoculars and, and the whole three eyes thing. Um, so. Uh, a, a little bit of additional trivia. Apparently, Reese was originally pitched to be the leader of the rebellion, not Ak- not the Akbar design. It was Reese. Really? Yeah. And so there's this article on the Australian version of StarWars.com, which I I guess I didn't realize existed. Uh, but there's an interview with uh, I think it's with let's see here one second. Um, it's with Tim Rose, and so he's mentioning. That, yeah, Reese was meant to be the rebel leader, but when George came in one night, uh, he basically told him that if he was puppeteering it, he was shifty because of because of his eyes. Uh, he can't give him a strong eye focus. So if he's looking at you, it's like which one of these three eyes is looking at me? <laughs> huh. Which I just I guess it makes sense when you're trying to you think of like a, a good guy and a main character. And one of the reasons they went with Akbar was because even though his the eyes are on the side of his head they considered him like if he's looking at you like he was a horse so he's more direct eye contact and more strength so they went with akbar instead of uh Riz as the yeah, Riz is kind of horsey i didn't realize that like yeah his... he is like his snout is very horsey uh yeah it's it's strange but there you go that's it's his shifty three eyes that that got him bumped from you know leader of the free galaxy to a, a drunk <laughs> <laughs> on the barge maybe that's why he's an angry drunk you know he just that could be yeah like, i used to lead this whole rebellion anyways what are you looking at yak face oh is that a racial slur yak face yak face I got, I got a name hey nice nice spider monkey you got there yak face call me yak face one more time yak face and then they get into a fight um Yep, that's that's basically that's basically now yeah, that makes sense. I think you can also tell that Lucas really likes this character. Um, if, you, yeah. if you think about, you know, in Episode One, there's a right. Reyes racer. Yeah, and then that's I right. think it's in Episode Two. There's like a a, a Reyes uh, senator, senator guy. Um, yeah, who has like one of the funniest uh, like oh my God. alien lines where it's like, duh, yes. duh, duh. <laughs> and then Belagan is like. <laughs> I disagree with that assessment completely. Yeah. I agree with the structural argument that you're making, 
but I think you're right. lost in the fine details. Now, when, I, yeah. that's that's when I really I I oh I I'm I'm okay with the Phantom Menace, but when it came to to that kind of stuff in that second movie, that is one of my prime examples of what just drives me crazy. Is that exact exchange between Jimmy Smiths and that? Reese guy, it is just absurd. Oh, is that is that when you're going to decide that you that you're a prequel hater? That's it, Steve. <laughs> That's when you're going to start after nine years of hating on the prequels for every single possible uh, feasible reason. Come on. That's what you're going on. to do. No, it's the little things. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, yeah, you do have. I, I think you got to put that drop in here because it is it's hilarious uh, yeah. that exchange. I'll, I'll try and find it. Oh, hey, speaking all about right. Star Wars movies, do you know what I did? What I watched all of them, like. Like two weeks ago. Oh. Yeah. So I, oh, yeah. my my girlfriend, who I mentioned a fair a fair amount. Eventually, we'll have her on for the Serbian special. Um, yes. She basically had never seen Star Wars. She saw the first movie, and that right. was it. And you right. know, my kids and I yeah. are fanatics. And it was spring break for my kids, and I I was working, so we just like ended up watching all nine movies. All yeah, nine movies. We didn't, we haven't seen Solo yet, but we saw the rest. And we watched okay. them in order, yeah. one through six, mm. and then seven and eight. And if you haven't yeah. done it, that really is the best way to watch it. Because you end up forgiving one through three for the weaknesses because you're not constantly comparing it to four through six. Like the strength of it, the kind of like the, the long vision of it and the and the, the differences and the subtle changes, like it ends up being really moving. And it was funny because it was sort of like watching it with a child mm -hmm. because my children were super excited that she had never seen it before. And she yeah. was in a really good mood because watching movies with my kids is fun and I'm a nice guy. So like she was like swept up in the fun of Star Wars. And so like my kids were sort of experiencing it through her innocence. Yeah. It was yeah. just an awesome time. It was just, That's, it was really You don't fun. get to do that too often. Yeah. No, and, and I wasn't doing like that, that whole thing of like, so what did you think about this? And what did you think about that? Right. You know, like it wasn't really that, but it was. Just kind of, kind of let it soak in. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of really funny moments where like her, first of all, she was like, yeah, I, I like that first movie. That was good. That Jar Jar character is wonderful. <laughs> and like, if you're just coming at it from like Star Wars isn't your childhood, but you're just watching like, I'm watching a kid's movie with some kids and my, my dorky boyfriend, you know, like. Jar Jar is great, yeah. and, and it's totally accurate. Like you just rewatch episode one from that angle; it's totally great. And then in episode three, she was like, oh, "I love this line. You know, this is how democracy dies with thunderous applause." <laughs> and I was like, "Huh?" And it's like she's from Serbia, dude. That is literally oh, how yeah. democracy died. Like, if you're from a country where that happened, you know, in in your lifetime, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. thank you, George Lucas, for actually making an interesting point about geopolitics. Yes, Natalie Portman delivered it like a like a like a wooden <laughs> Indian, but like, still, oh, yeah. So yeah, see that it's it's the whole uh, the the on paper versus yeah. <laughs> or in George's brain versus. On screen, but, there's a, but for her yeah. who was coming into yeah. it, and, you know, she's no dummy. You know, she was able to. Yeah, yeah. You know, sure. She didn't. You know, she thought that Hayden Christensen wasn't a particularly great actor. You know, like she wasn't just saying this thing. I love everything. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, it was it was really fun. And then you know, and naturally, she liked the original trilogy the most. She wasn't like holding on to it as some kind of perfect thing. <laughs> you know, and it was just yeah. Yeah. So that was. Well, that's awesome, man. That sounds like a good time. I'm. I'm thinking maybe i'll maybe i'll go for that by uh, by the end of the year when when nine comes out I'll, I'll give it a shot i haven't i haven't watched the prequels in a long time so it, it especially after seven and eight where yeah. it's great yeah. and it's all the fan service and it's all the this and that and then you just see like oh my god lucas is on a different level even if you don't like what he's doing just as an artist yeah. he's just he's just doing something that people don't do <laughs> like people just don't make art like that anymore um yeah yeah it was a that was that was a time, <laughs> but um, uh, we'll have to look forward right. to Steve's episode of Star Wars at the movies, where he's going to be yeah. talking about. Uh, I keep keep uh, keep an ear out. He's going to be releasing an episode about the release of Episode One. Uh, I, yeah. I recorded like a twenty minute ramble about my experience. I was it, driving it was, through a uh, snowstorm at the time, so you hear all the snow under my right. tires, and uh, yeah, it is exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that'll I'm hoping to get that out on the actual anniversary of the movie. So that that's the plan. Um so yeah, thanks for for the the shout out and um yeah, look forward to it. 
All right, Steve, do, are there any other uh, features that we're trying to shoehorn in here, or are we just going to feed we, got, we just have the unloved. That's the last thing. Unloved. And that, that doesn't have – yeah, there's an unloved. Okay. Believe it or not. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Steve, uh, what, what, what is unloved about re -E? I mean, besides the, I guess you could say that the sculpt is unloved because Ron thinks that it's a lame character. And, right, and I right. don't love, you know, looking at it, actually, Ron's picture is pretty nice and you can see the details of re -E's, uh in particular. It's beautiful. His, I think it's a beautiful. His popular neck, which, man, <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. what is the unloved item, Steve? I actually don't know. I thought oh, I, you don't... I, oh, wait, okay. is this the cups? Yeah. Oh, Dixie so cups. I, okay. Yeah, so I, I picked – it's a particular Dixie cup that has Riyi's holding a cup, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, Misa it's, Nadim, yes. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, it's basically the same image on the card back artwork. Uh, so this was in a line of Return of the Jedi Dixie cups that – there were quite a few of them that came out, but there was one. He's featured on a cup with his name there. He's on there with, uh, I think, 3PO. And, oh, my God, is it Yak Face on this cup? Is it? It is. Sky. So, oh, man. Wait, okay. this this cup is the fight. This this cup is the photo art and the fight. Oh, my God. It, yeah. So, yeah, you got Yak Face and Salacious, 3PO in between them. And when you spin it around, you have Reese on the other side. Whoa! Wow, I, yeah, there you go. Accident, but uh, a good one. <laughs> well, this this is why we do it. This is why we yeah. do the show. Because like you're you, looking at this stuff way too uh, closely. <laughs> yeah, if you just spend you know four hours talking to different Star Wars people, eventually you come up with an idea. Uh, yeah. Well, what's I mean, let's give the artist some credit here. Yeah, no, they, yeah. they did reverse the hand. So yes, in the photo right. art, uh, Riyi's, you see the outside of his hand. Right. Um, when he's like picking the fight with Yak Face. Yeah. <laughs> Call me Yak Face one more time. My name is Salt Mary. Okay, Salt Mary. Hey, no. Uh, <laughs> and, and so, you know, the artist had to get the foreshortening on his little Vienna sausage fingers. Right. And yeah. you had to see the other side of the cup. Um, yeah. I do think it'd be fun to redo one for your friend Brock and, and our friend Brock and just have it say, have it be a Surge cup. Because uh, he, yeah. he, he likes Surge, um, he would dig that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'm starting to think those aren't uh, those aren't ears. Those might just be antenna. I think they're antenna, Sky. Not okay. now that I'm looking at them again. Um, but you know, we, we can... <laughs> he's an it, angry it drunk, that... Mister Ed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with with three eyes. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, there's a great article on on Fanta tracks by i think richard hutchinson did it yes. if you want to look at all the other jedi cups they're they're on there and then on the on our blog jonathan McElwain recently did a blog on some empire strikes back uh dixie cup promotions but i figured we got to wait a little bit to do a, a blog log on that because i know he has a lot more yes he could talk about dixie cups definitely check out those yes just over and over, but yeah. you should definitely check out both of those. And I'm looking around a little bit on the internet, and there's definitely lots of stills of this fight. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do some some more digging. I'm 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 curious to to see them. This That's... might be one of these our trademark is stupidity thing where everybody. I, I think it might be. Stupidity. Yeah, it probably is. Um, because I was what? so focused on the who, on the. Who cares? But you know, <laughs> this is the thing, Steve. Like, okay, statistically. This is going to be listened to maybe four or five hundred times, I think. Okay, which is pretty impressive. Hey, way to go, Steve. We have a show. Um, <laughs> there'll probably be like five of those people who knew about this deleted scene and are sitting there staring at the phone, yes. and they're going to tell us, "Oh, actually, Sky, I actually knew about that." But the rest of you, three hundred and ninety-five, my math might not be too good on that. You're going to be psyched that we brought it up. So it's yeah, it's I mean, for you it's, guys. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's doing these shows it's like a, it's basically just a way for us to kind of <laughs> become less stupid right so it's <laughs> yes as we go it's not, not not we don't go in knowing it all we, we kind of learn it as we go so yeah it's yeah. uh it's fun i, I love doing this well so. I, I like the i like the so we could <laughs> boy maybe i should do a uh reese yak face fight focus like i'm doing <laughs> the the corridor of light just I like how that. many different yeah. images of this fight can we have <laughs> um, yeah 
Oh, uh, yeah, Steve. The photo okay, arts okay. Be a tough one, but we can't do this for Celebration, the Archive Party Four. But for mm-hmm. Archive Party 5, if we could come up with some kind of Yak Face versus Re Yee's, like, Rock'em Sock'em robot game. I like um, this idea. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, if we, we got... could if we could make, like, some kind of, like, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out with Re Yee's and... Giant and... Yee's hands. Yes. Yeah, Yee's hands and, like, and uh, and uh, C-3PO as, like, the Mario uh, ref, you know? Right, 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 right. Um, yeah. Or Salacious Crumb. I don't know. We'll, we'll think about it. <laughs> Um, we, we got we got a little time to develop that one. That's yeah. uh, <laughs> oh man. Pourquoi pourquoi ces canons au bruit étonnant? Because now we're back in feedback, Steve. And yeah, it's the 25th anniversary of the archive. It's the fifth anniversary of the blog. And it's the ninth anniversary of the podcast. So we're not yeah. quite on there. But I've no. still never come up with a good feedback uh, the good feedback sound drop. Uh, I still wonder if people are calling the Pocket Wampa line. Um, oh, I, I really hope that, that somewhere out there there are some Pocket Wampa calls. <laughs> like, um, hi, Sky and Steve. Um, yeah, I'm calling. I found a lot of carded figures in my attic. I don't know. I love your show. You know, just give me a call. Um, so let's talk about, about feedback, Steve. Um, we got some good feedback from the Canadian show in general. Yeah. Uh, it yeah, yeah. People liked it. Uh, I was scared that I was rude, uh, to, to Toby and to Chris, but it turns out I wasn't. Um, I just, I really liked those guys, but I was just kind of salty there for some reason. Um, <laughs> it, it, a, little, a little, slightly salty. Slightly. Yeah. Um, I wonder how I come across on this episode. I, I, I have been... <laughs> In general, I try not to push people too hard, but it's actually more compelling listening when I do. So, yeah, I mean, I don't like I wasn't like grilling Chris on the on the prop store things, but I, I was like maybe asking one question beyond like the 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 quick answer. But right, yeah, I don't know. But uh, I man, I am really psyched to have this catalog, though, Steve. <laughs> do you, you have it right? I yeah yeah it's it is a uh, it's nice it's really well done and it, Chris did an awesome job with it and it's I'm sure you know obviously this is it was a big success and I'm I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna do fine with these moving forward. Yes. Um, yeah, it was fun kind of hanging out the day before. I didn't see the auction, but I did get to get go see everybody and hopefully that'll happen again. So. Yes, um, and yeah. Any other? Any, what about what about feedback? Any other feedback you wanted to cover here? <laughs> I actually haven't been looking, yes. Steve. Oh, okay. I, you know what? Though I will say this: that uh, I've been having fun checking out because we never know how many people watch our show. Um, I mean, listen to our show through iTunes because they don't provide us yeah. that information. Um, right. So the the YouTube is really fun. So I've I've that just gives you some hard stats, right? You can you can actually yes. get some info from that. And so I've now learned that on YouTube, people have listened to over three hundred and seventeen thousand minutes of our podcast, Steve. Oh, and uh, wow, yeah, just like in the last month, people listened to ten thousand minutes of us talking. That's uh, that I don't know if I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really weird. I mean, it's. It's my favorite thing at celebrations whenever people come up and then they're surprised that we're talking. And mainly I like that because that's how I am whenever I meet podcasters. I'm like, your voice. Yeah. I'm, I'm like Rose when she meets uh, Finn, you know. I'm like, you, <laughs> you, you're Jimmy Mac. You're, you're talking to me, you know. Like it's a – yeah. So, um, yeah. so why, why don't we see what comments there are on the YouTube channel? Because that's actually – I'm more likely to look at that. Um, because I love YouTube, Steve. Yeah, you are a YouTube sensation. <laughs> yeah, I, that's well. That's the other thing, Steve. So I have my my channel, the Sky Sweaty Record Reviews. So look that up if you want to hear me give reviews of new music. Uh, like I just reviewed the album Dave. Uh, I mean, by a guy named Dave. It's really, really good. Crazy good, like rap album, like super psychological, interesting. And I currently have 150 subscribers on that. And the archive only, the Kivecast only has 200. So I'm about to pass the Kivecast. <laughs> um, Steve, I don't think you should let that happen. No, no that's, uh, that's, uh... <laughs> that's pretty unacceptable. We're going to be putting a lot of videos up on the Kivecast uh, page uh, at Celebration. 
Um, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be so good. we'll be doing on the Kivecast page on Facebook. I've been doing a lot of stuff on Facebook, the, the Facebook Live stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, that that's definitely you're uh, you're much more comfortable there. That that's uh, it's, I'm glad that one of us is because <laughs> yeah, it, it turns out like I really like being on camera and I really like recording myself. This is shocking to <laughs> zero of our listeners. You're right. Yeah. Um, oh man! And it turns out we have no comments on the. Uh... I, I was just—I was gonna say I—I I wasn't sure if there would be any, but um, you know we're we're, we're continu- continuing the tradition from the the blog and Rebel Scum. Uh, I, I I'm still posting on Rebel Scum, and the last couple episodes have just gone by into the night without a single. <laughs> yeah. You know that's just the way the way of the world. But hey, you know you you got the YouTube stats. That'll that'll help you. Yep, and we know you're listening. And uh, yeah, it was funny when I bought the microphone. I was like, "This is the only time I've ever thought about asking for money for the podcast." I was like, <laughs> "It would be sort of nice if we didn't have to buy our own, buy our own, you know, windscreens." Windscreens, yeah. <laughs> um, baseball season is starting this weekend. Steve and I will be drafting oh, our teams. Right, right, right. right. And we have oh, we have boy. a couple. Uh, I guess just one. I put out the call on the Facebook page if you wanted to join. Uh, we were joined by Matthew Fox, um, so he's a space freak who'll be listening. I told him that I told anyone who joined through the show that they could be on the show, so he'll be on the show sometime to talk about his team. Sounds good. Um, yeah. And I named my team the name I named them because I knew that I would be editing this episode right before releasing it, right, be- right before oh, drafting. Okay. See, I haven't I haven't seen the new name. I what is it? It's Jose Riggs. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know, Jose Reyes uh, was a shortstop for the New York Mets. My favorite <laughs> baseball squadron is the Nye Mets. And uh, and I think he's retired now or baseball is retiring him. I don't, I don't think he's going to find a team. Um, so I've been waiting because I don't like having the names of active players. But right, I right, just that's couldn't important resist for you. Yeah. Jose Reyes as a joke. Um, <laughs> Did you create a, a new uh, – like? Uh... Profile picture. Yeah, yeah, it's it's okay. it's Riggs with a with a with the Mets hat. Okay. So, and I think I might call this episode Jose Riggs. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about tying it in, like you know, Riggs season threes, you know, with my Sky Coup. That's not a bad yeah. thing too. Or you've you got some options. Yeah, I do. Also, did you know someone sent me a shirt? No, I don't know who it what? is. It just says Yeet. <laughs> do you know what Yeet is? <laughs> It's like it's like, uh, it's like a thing young so. people say. It's like yeah, go, awesome, sweet. They just go yeet. No, and uh, uh, nope, nope. <laughs> it's, I think it was one of Django's, my son's friends, like trolling me, uh, trying to see if okay. I would wear it because it'd be so embarrassing. Uh, okay. And so I immediately put it on and went to the mall with the kids and walked around to like random teenage girls with Django and be like, I am yeet. It was very funny. <laughs> um, so yeah. So I was thinking uh, about calling it Yeet Reyes Season Three. Yeah, he- I think you gotta just uh, and you gotta bring the shirt to celebration and just put re in front of it. Re yeet. <laughs> re yeet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Steve. Oh man. Uh, Jose re yeet. All right. In that case, I gotta go to bed. I gotta get up in like five hours. But uh, this has been yeah. an awesome episode. That's and, been fun. Uh, until celebration. Wampa wampa. Yeah, for... Adios. Star Wars figures. R two D two. Chewbacca, Luke, and Princess Leia. They're the Star Wars Early Bird set of figures. These action figures are not yet available, but this Star Wars Early Bird certificate package is in stores with its colorful Star Wars picture display set and certificate. This podcast is not endorsed by Lucasfilm Limited, Hasbro Toys, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. The official Star Wars site can be found at www.starwars.com. The official Hasbro site can be found at www.hasbro.com. Star Wars all names and sounds of Star Wars characters and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or the respective copyright and trademark holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Star Wars Collector's Archive, unless otherwise indicated.
That's actually my text message right there. Did you hear that? It's it's Poggle the Lesser from episode two. I like Poggle the Lesser. What are you expecting? Some kind of like special Easter egg here at the end? Huh? You think I'm going to offer you some super rare limited to 20 pieces swag at the next celebration? Yeah, I am. I'm going to tell you how to get it. It's a special limited edition Space Freak pin. The image in it is some kind of weird creature from Ewoks in its Serbian translation of the word sniff. Noosh! Noosh. How do you get it? Why are you listening to me talk? Well, you have to walk up to me and show me that you've subscribed to our Facebook, I mean Facebook, to our YouTube channel. We can't let the Kivecast lose to Sky. Sky cannot have more subscribers than the Kivecast. This is important. So again, show up, show me the uh, YouTube on your phone where it says you're subscribed to the Kivecast and you will get the Noosh pin. Only 20 will get it. Noosh! 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 Oh, hey, that's Steve actually. Noosh! What's he saying? Let me look it up here. Noosh! <clears throat> Noosh. Bart's card bags Noosh. are looking great. Noosh. Okay. Noosh. Goodbye. Noosh. 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 Noosh.